What up? What's How's going, it going, people? It? How's it going, Twitch? Twitch crew? Let me get this out of the way. Right, is it? Bad so, people uh, in here. Mad people in here. What's up, everyone? We're going to do a little look into one of our project files in Ableton. Uh, this tune is called Iron Sharpens Iron, and it came out on our last EP. And um, this tune actually started as like a sketch that I made, and mm -hmm. um, sort of a beat loop. And Alex took that loop and further developed it and replayed some of the synthesizers and uh, turned it into the full track that's on wax now. Um, so yeah, uh, let's check it out. This is the final track. I'm just going to jump into the original loop first and we'll, we'll check it out. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so we've gone up through three different names, I think, in this track. Um, and this would have been the first instance that you sent. Just like a looped idea, basically, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah That's like a rough sketch. Um, let's have a little list. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So when you sent that I was like, okay, that's a vibe already. Um and then if we when we jump to the other track, um what I did is extended the first half of the loop, looped that around and then did a turnaround a bit later just to kind of like, you know, carry on the groove. Yeah. Um <clears throat> but um, if we go to the other project, um, what I did is took the MIDI um, and then uh, basically redid the riff but through my gear. So I did it through, uh, the MIDI was triggering the Moog Sub 37 and what I did is um, send that through the analog heat to get a bit of saturation. Um, most of the time, I, I would send everything through that, you know, just to warm things up. Yeah. It was like on a a low uh, wet mix, you know, just giving it a bit of oomph, basically, a bit of EQ, and then recorded different instances, fucking with the oscillators, you know, LFOs, and just like that's what we do a lot, I guess. Just yeah. you know, make make a riff, send it through the gear, and then. Um, you know, come up with as many different instances that we can then chop up and kind of glue together. So that, that way it keeps things interesting, you know? Cool. Um, yeah. So that's one way of working the, uh, that we do quite often. But um, should we have a look at the, yeah. at the next Let one? Let me just show real quick like what's going on in this file and then mm -hmm. we'll transition. Uh, people are saying the project is a little quiet. I'll, I'll turn it up. Okay. I'm just going to move that down. So let's just I'll just solo this for and show how it developed from, from this to what yeah, you do yeah. at the mug. So you know, a decent bass mid sound, but not mm -hmm. a lot of motion going on, not a lot of animation. So um yeah, it's basically just a sample, right? Um with some effects, and then there's a sub under it that's doing the same pattern. Operator. Yeah. Um, and then these little guys are like um, 
a long session that we recorded that's basically just a bass sounds um, uh -huh. that we threw through granulator. So you've got like, uh, let me see, I can hit this with the, it's going to work. Oh, yeah. I'm just jumping to different points in the sample. This is the one that we ended up using in the mm -hmm. basement. Turn around there. Yeah. And this is just a long recording of like a bunch of bass sounds that we messed up with the granulator. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those ended up in the final track. Let's take a look at the final track real quick. Uh, this joint. Save. Computer is mad slow when I'm streaming. I'm gonna figure it out. But uh, what's up, Chi? What's up? Oh, <laughs> what's up, Vorso? Who else is in the chat? Squad. Cool. All right. Here's the final tune. Um, so we've got everything separated into drums. Let's check out the drums real quick, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I kept like your original timing and moves, you know, slightly move some hits around to get the groove. Yeah. Um, a bit looser. The hats are like very off. Yeah. There's some um, fizz layered on top of the kick. Yep. Some claps. Yeah, it's one layer. It's just fizz, yeah. Yeah. There's the, the hat. Mm -hmm. The old hurricane hat, kind of a mid rangey hat. What's this? Some splashes. Yeah. So a layered up clap over the snare. the hurricane top end of the kick and then the mm -hmm. bottom end is one of these primo kind of kicks. Yeah. A little boom bap kick. And that's pretty much it for the drums. Some minor variations here. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward like boom bap kind of groove. And then we've got what's going on down here. This is that's... this is so this is the Moog. So I ended up um, keeping three of the instances. I pulled them out here as well so we can hear the differences. Yeah, check them out. So this is basically Alex took my MIDI from the previous project and replayed it with the Sub-37. Got some gnarly sounds. The tail on that is cool with the... Uh, with the the, the, yeah, um, left the tail so it would go into the turnaround. Yeah. Um, just like the decay a little bit. Yeah. You can hear there's a lot more motion. Yeah, the I think there I was um, uh, transposing live as well, just uh, doing yeah. the quick jolts. You so get you those get some kind of octave, movement. octave jumps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. So yeah, like I spent like quite a bit of time just recording a few different ones and then like kept the ones that I felt had the best movement. And we uh, ended up with this sort of chopped up one mm -hmm. where you've got going. moments where it gets detuned but it's mm -hmm. like not doing it the entire time like you just got yeah. some moments where it's kind of straight some moments where it's super and it detuned. feels like the imaging is different so uh, yeah it gives it gives some nice movement yeah um that's a, that's an easy way of keeping things interesting if you have you know like i was uh, saying um having a lot of you know slightly different instances of it mm -hmm. um then you're quickly you know it gets less boring rather than having the same loop going over and over again yeah um, Definitely. And then you could also, you know, sometimes what we do a lot is we'll copy the channel and then like EQ or effect differently, you know, with reverb or uh, saturation and then 
you know again you can drop up and down and then you'll get like some nice movement again yeah yeah you can do this with software too you don't necessarily need you know a Moog to do it like no. you can just record a few instances of uh, yeah. analog or operator whatever you're using I like having the hands on, you know, like doing the filtering and, you know, switching things up. I, I, yeah. I find it more fun and kind of uh, gives it a bit of looseness, you know? Definitely. Mm. What else is going on in this song? We've got a couple little. Yeah. There's like a, so a high pass like version. One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With some filtering going on. Yeah. Uh, doing that in. So, in, yeah, um, in high pass is out mm -hmm. uh, into, back into it. So again, gives it like very simple, but you know, nice little trick. Yeah. Um, um, and then this would be, be like the, the high pass intro. intro so yeah. Just going through a bit of amp. Yeah. Amp is uh, uh, automating up. Yeah. So like intensify the, the build up. <laughs> Pass opening up there at the end. Mm -hmm. um. And then the intro reasons to see that was triggered in MIDI, and then uh, again I put it through my gear, so it's going through the analog heat and then the timeline delay. Oh yeah, uh, yeah Strymon timeline delay slightly. Again, I did it live, you know, recorded yeah. it in, like sort of opening it up. Obviously, you can do this in software. Yeah. Um, and then there's Echo a, Boy would be like a good one, good alternative for Echo people. Echo Boy is good for that. Who are in, uh, in software land. Um, and also the even tide space, so the reverb pedal. Again, yeah. you could get a software version. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, it's just a personal preference, um, having it live and you know hands on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So let's check these. This is. Yeah, so some of the wave sounds. And then the, the filters on the, on the analog heat opening up. Yeah. Two different sounds, but mm -hmm. animated differently. You're doing reverse filters. Yeah. What's this joint? Let's see. Yeah. Super distorted one. They didn't yeah, end up on the track, but yeah. Distorted layer, the. the sits on top yeah we make a lot of versions and then like sometimes they end up in the track sometimes they don't mm -hmm. but like there's the actual software who are. not much processing yeah. Yeah. Um, that's serious amount of side chain compression side chaining <laughs> a lot of side chaining yeah. and this is probably side chaining just, just, just the kick or actually to a group, so the group. yeah cool um and these are the bass pack things, the granulator things that we were using mm -hmm. in the other, other song. Um, it's actually a pretty simple project. There's not a lot. Um, yeah, it's pretty basic. Going on. Um, and then there's like some. What do we got down here? It's MIDI, and then this is some atmospheres. Yeah, so one of some like 808 kicks, the EVM kick, mm -hmm. just the highs. Um, and then some Vox samples. Can't tell you what they're from. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell you where we got these at all. Okay. Yeah, Just a guy saying what. Yeah, it's cool. Um, what else? Effects. Yeah. Is this one you made, do you think, or is it? Could be. It sounds like something from a from a recording, like yeah. a session. Yeah. Um, With a little bit of like that guitar amp like uh, feedback mm -hmm. kind of building up. That's a good trick for doing build ups that aren't just like a rising yep. you know, EDM tone is like do uh, a bunch of feedback either in hardware or just with whatever, whatever software you have and just record it a little bit of distortion. So you've got like one tone that's just like changing in uh, changing in timbre and intensity mm -hmm. rather than changing in pitch the whole time. Um, 
Yeah, air riser. St standard riser. Standard riser. riser. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just some air. Yeah. And then we've got some little DJ tool type things. Mm -hmm. um, All saturated, most of them. Just yeah. give, so they're a little bit aggressive. Yeah, a little bit of amp. Uh, standard yeah, horn. Yeah, just little sprinkles. Give it some atmosphere. Yeah. What's oh. the outro doing? I think the outro we had some like. Uh, Just, just this kick, but yeah. Oh yeah, this one is actually where it's doing some interesting stuff. So I think this is the mode, but... You remember what you did? Yeah, that's um, the Bustle time effects. Bastle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like um, affecting the pitch, and again, I'm doing that. It's, you know... Um, but yeah, it's just processing it through that yeah. it's basically like a tape emulation so yeah. i'm like slowly slowly you know m moving the the speed of the tape and it gives this like mad effect yeah um but i'll run like entire tracks for it it's similar to the granulator yeah um where you get some like mad instances repetitions mm -hmm. uh, it's got filter on there like it's, it's really cool unit um i only just got it so i was just messing around with it yeah um and now yeah. Um, Do you? Uh, yeah. If you wanted to like get um, a similar sound in software, you could just use like a pitch drop. Mm -hmm. I'll just show show them real quick. So let's say you've got this kick here. I'll just loop this part and throw a pitch drop on there and uh, show the people how this works, but. Yeah, this is just a Max for Live plugin, and you can change the drop duration. It's, it just basically simulates a turntable stopping, mm -hmm. um, and then you so you turn the activate drop on right where you want it to stop. So you got like a something like this. You yeah. could even do it slower yeah. than that. Extend yeah. the full. Very similar. Yeah, similar kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Maybe it sounds a little bit more tapey or like yeah. natural in the harder well, one, but. Yeah, I mean that's just due to the probably the distortion from the <coughs> from the heat or something. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, like you know, you can achieve a lot. Uh, basically, the same things. And they just might sound different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think like the main benefit of hardware is like you have all these physical controls in front of you, and like um, you know, like all these knobs that you're playing with, and like part of the fun of it is like interacting with that interface. Um, so, if you're doing it in software, the best thing to do is get a controller, get a cheap controller with a bunch of knobs and like assign them to a bunch of parameters, and then you can like record yourself messing with them and add that sort of human element to the automation. You know mm. what I mean? The benefit of all that as well is that you're recording like you know, in the end, hours of sounds, mm. and we rely on that a lot, yeah. especially when we're touring. Um, you know, here you have a big modular setup, so we'll just record half an hour of, of modular, yeah. reprocess it through, I don't know, granulator or, you know, yeah. distort the shit out of it until it's unrecognizable. And yeah. then, you know, we find some cool bits to chop and then like instantly it's like having your own sample pack. Yeah. You know, almost. Yeah, totally. Um, and then again, same thing with, with the kick drums or snares, you know, um, I've built up like you've built up your own i've built yeah. up my own over the years uh through a combination of samples uh layering samples and then you know bouncing um kicks from different um projects yeah. and then like eventually merging them with other sounds and then they just evolve and you know then you suddenly you have so bouncing that like, all the different hits when you finish a tune is really useful as well because then when you start a track you're not spending shitloads of time just looking for a decent kick you've got them you know something right there or mm -hmm. you have a kick that is useful for certain things and you know that's what i have now so yeah totally it saves you so much time yeah definitely because a lot of that is is time consuming yeah. um yeah so you can also just bounce if you're just working on a tune sometimes i won't be getting anywhere and i'll just bounce the entire tune and just send it over to alex and he'll like maybe Resample it like I think we ended up with like um, What was the tune on the album that, that we did that like forget but um, 
yeah, it's like, you know, you can just like resample yourself and sometimes you'll get like better results than if you just kept working on the original song, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think in our, in our case, you know, bouncing back and forth is, it's easy when you get stuck, you know, like yeah. the amount of times where I've worked on something, I'm like, get to the point, I'm like, this is so shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go home feeling like you've been, you know, blagging you it wasted your whole your time. Inter yeah. Like there are times where like, I go in the studio and I'm like, yeah, this is sick. And then by the end of the day, I'm like, this is so shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you go home and you're like, Oh man, like literally start, I start believing that I've been blagging it the whole way yeah. and I just had a <laughs> all right tune here and there. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're like sidetracking now. No, no, that's, that's good. I mean, like, that's like, you know, when you send it, that's, that's the benefit of also having a partner is like, you can send that tune to your partner and they'll be like, this is fire. Or like, even if they don't think it's yeah. perfect, they'll see the potential in it and, you know, have an idea of where to go with it or like what to fix that you can't hear because you made it and you are too like invested in whatever you've already made you know yeah you can tunnel vision really easily um yeah. but yeah like so that that helps a lot um because you know when i'm working on solo stuff sometimes i drive myself mad yeah. um but yeah so i don't know I, I guess we could answer some questions if anyone's got anything yeah maybe there. let's start with like if anybody has any specific questions about this project um mm -hmm. since we already have it open i'll just open it up for chat and do you guys have any questions um yeah x x he says this requires having a partner with good music taste that's accurate very true because like you know <laughs> it's like we uh you the the important thing is that you trust your partner you know um even if you're just starting with somebody you have to trust them and like you have to trust that anything that they're doing is for the benefit of the tune and not to like assert whatever like egotistical desire they want for control you know mm. um and so have, trust, cult cultivating yeah. that trust is important in the studio i think yeah um, in our case i feel like we just have a very similar taste in music and, and and sonically we know what we like and what we don't yeah and we're very similar in that sense i mean you, you obviously you have you know your your sound design uh uh, thing you know like recognizable uh, you know uh, techniques and whatnot and so right but it all kind of with shades it all we all it's it sound we know when it it fits yeah, you know we know when it sounds like, natural thing. like shades for I'm sure i'm not explaining myself very well no no, no, no. But, i think um, i feel you um somebody wanted to hear our snare chain let's see okay. snare we have a snare group right here mm -hmm. it's a little bit of eq uh there's this premier snare which is actually that's eq'd quite a bit high cut uh or low cut pretty i intensely. like yeah i like picking out frequencies a lot rather than boosting um mm -hmm. and maybe sometimes too much but especially in the in the sort of like low mids you know i don't like super heavy snares i like being able you know the, the fact that you can make sound something sound heavy without you don't need a huge snare that's going to yeah. take all your mix yeah you know yeah um yeah i like snares to be like a little bit more subtle or just mm -hmm. have a little more naturalistic timbre i guess yeah um then we've got like a drum machine clap on there with a uh-huh a little bit of reverb send and then there's what is this oh, that's just the uh the fills yeah that's pretty much it just a uh snare and a clap so yeah. some someone's asking about the drum processing so like the drum bus uh, mm -hmm. let's have a look uh usually some soft limiting compression nothing crazy saturation so we've got this satin first and that's quite dormant actually it's not it's driving a little bit Driving uh, uh, twenty seven percent here, mm -hmm. one hundred percent wet. It's just doing the default uh, warm tape. Pops it out a little bit. Yeah, uh, decap. Yeah, is actually same thing pretty again. Pretty subtle also mm -hmm. on the E setting. I mean, you could uh, do a, a mute thing. Mm -hmm. See, so uh, people can hear what's going on. It it's just like bus. pushes out all the frequencies a little bit, gives it a bit of warmth. Yeah, you can hear now. So it's not dramatic, but you can hear it's pulling out all the right things. Yeah, we've got a little two-band, multi-band here. 
at a very low amount. Yeah, OTT, not on Smash. <laughs> not on Smash. Uh, Multiband, mm -hmm. also not Again, on dormant. Smash. Glue, so, much, you know, much. yeah, the glue is again soft. Um, it's a bunch of subtle things that add up to yeah. a bit more presence. So, you know, just do, I like doing that's quite an easy way of really hearing what you're doing with the dry wet and like, uh, you know, sort of pull things up until you feel like it's doing what you need and not, you know, over bubbling it because then you're just crushing everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, keep keep it simple and and you know a lot of um, just EQing and leveling. Like yeah. sometimes you can pull the clap down by two dB and it will actually make a lot of difference. Or yeah. you know, like I spend time just listening and listening and leveling yeah. slowly. Or if we listen to this kick, it sounds like almost nothing, but mm -hmm. then in the context, yeah, it's adding that like hiss to the to the kick and making it. Giving it more like mix presence, so yeah. if I turn it off, it's kind of because the the kick itself doesn't have a lot of um, uh, poke or you know transients on the top, so that's yeah. just adding adding that um, separately. Yeah. Um, and yeah, with a lot of like let's say my approach with kick drums is there's not a lot going on in the high end a lot of the time, and I put away a lot of like you know like subtract EQ until I feel like. The kicks are really round, mm -hmm. um, but that's just a prefer preferential thing. You know, some people could say that it's not, you know, it's not punchy enough. But to me, uh, you know, it's just again, again, it's a preference thing, yeah. isn't it? We like to, you know, generally like have things sit back a little bit more, not not have every sound be full frequency range. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> somebody asked if why didn't we quarantine from each other because Alex was on tour and then he. Basically, was like whole tour got canceled, and I'm like, dude, you got to come back to the states. We we're he was planning on staying here anyway, um, so he came back to the states, and he's basically quarantined with us. So we're yeah. making this album. <laughs> so actually, yeah, well, I mean, yes. Yeah, so, that way. so like my whole tour got canceled, like a lot of other people, which is unfortunate. But you know, we're all like making the best out of the situation, and hope everyone's doing that as well. But yeah, I mean, I was coming here anyway, so. And my ticket was booked, so I ended up coming. But I didn't know my, my tour was cancelled until I landed. Yeah. Like, from when I left Auckland, I, my tour was still going on. When I landed in LA, it was done. Like, yeah. So, you know, being here, it was, it's a good opportunity to finish our next big project, basically. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this is old questions, but let's, let's go yeah. through them. How do you get 808s to hit sounding great without having subs? Um, treating your room uh, is the most important thing. I built some bass traps in the corners myself, and they're like floor-to-ceiling rock wall in the corners. Yep. Uh, and then big, big futon couch in the back uh, helps a lot too with, with bass sounding good. Uh, I'm using barefoot monitors, which are the micro main 45s, and they sound uh, great all the way down to you know 20 hertz. Um, and, and generous uh, in low end. Yeah, they're, and they're very controlled and as well. Yeah, yeah. The, so you don't really need to sub with them, especially in a small room. Mm. Um, the, yeah, we have same monitors as well, which yeah. helps a lot, um, especially when we're bouncing from studio to studio. And yeah, you know, it's like uh, we've got the same point of reference. Um, your volume levels and mix down with heavy mid sense. How are you combating phasing or oversaturation? Um, EQing and um, sometimes we'll we'll layer in like yeah. a sub. I don't think we did that on this song though. I think it's just, just Not, the, the Mo, right? Yeah, the there's, Mo. There's a sub on the second part here. Yeah, that's just um, operator yeah. um, following the um, Mentasm. Yeah, and then we've got. Click on the bass uh, channel. The um, big one. Yeah. Where is it? Can you... Oh yeah, this audio channel. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, yeah. let's look at the chain. So the chain is basically there's a low pass chain. Alex has some aggressive boost at like this is probably the fundamental right here. Uh, utility is going bass mono. Yeah. Um, so that's that's you know combating phasing in terms of the bass, like the bass is going to come through mono. 
Uh, and then you've got a compressor, which are these are side chain two. Kick and snare. And kick and snare. Um, and, and separately, so you can adjust the yeah. movement. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, you, which is you cool. need you need less snare side chain. Uh, that and Alex is just spilling drinks in my studio. Nice. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> things not to do in the studio. <laughs> Yeah. Um, let me. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll talk about this chain if you wanna. So, yeah, this is your basic like low high split. So the lows are are mono, and the highs are not mono. The highs have some delay on them actually, um, which is just doing like a Haas effect, uh, which is basically where you have one channel that's slightly delayed from the other, which gives a sort of psychoacoustic effect of of a wider stereo image. Yeah. Um, and everything's high pass at you know 200, and then you've got a little bit of a shelfy kind of boost mm -hmm. the highs EQ, Haas effect, FF Pro Q. Let's see what that's doing. A little bit more mid frequency, yeah, and sidechain compression um, after the split. So that's basically what the bass is doing. So that's how we take care of any phasing issues. Is we just you know throw a Haas on the on the mids and highs and hope for the best yeah <laughs> we're not doing a lot of uh you know uh what are those like phase examination plugins like that? yeah some, some people really go a bit too deep but um i think just having it the, the, it always all stems from this the the quality of your source uh, and yeah. the sounds you know what i mean um but we don't we actually don't like i talk to people sometimes you know if i'm playing somewhere and some people talk to me about their like master chain and stuff and i'm like holy shit like uh, like this is so much going on where like here on a, let's have a look at our master chain it would be like maybe yeah just a glue literally yeah um not that's because aggressive. you know with uh, it's better to do the work in the in the buses so make sure your drums are slamming already yeah. uh the bass is controlled and then you level them out and then yeah just like you know glue them a little bit at the end yeah um sometimes we might go a little bit deeper than that but honestly not you know not that much again it's like where it's at the point of what samples you use uh, and if your recording is how you know how good the source is, yeah, um, yeah. So that helps uh, as a starting point, you know. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do you go for specific grooves, or do they happen by accident? Sub sixty is asking mm -hmm. us. Um, I think uh, we sort of have a natural inclination to play these kind of boom bap, like New York rap inspired kind of hip hop kind of beats. Yeah. Um, and then a lot lately we've been doing sort of 120 kind of beats but like 60 60 bpm kind of beats um that are kind of like influenced by trap but also by i don't know like you know doom metal and hip-hop and just like everything um so uh yeah i think grooves are just something that you you know if you play the piano or you play little drums or something you just kind of feel it out mm -hmm. um i would say um try and stay off grid or play yeah. play things like i don't know with an mpd or something like what i'll do is um for for example the saga like i just sat there and did the beat first sometimes like um and i just you know um got a drum rack threw in some sounds tweak them a little bit so they sound decent and then you know jam out like uh, a little drum beat and then go back and move things slightly because you know like i'm not the best finger drummer and then when it feels natural um and i think that's the problem uh if things are too rigid then uh, you know the, you, you haven't got a groove mm -hmm. and um like we were yeah, saying you can, you can do it you can like record it um with a click track mm -hmm. and you do a little and then like if you're a little bit off you always have the quantize function, and on the right. Ableton quantize function, you can, like, let me just jump in the MIDI real quick. Like, if I select some notes and do a command shift U, you've got the amount slider. So, like, if you just want to quantize it a little bit to make it a little bit more on the grid, you can. Mm -hmm. Or if you want it 100% on the grid, like, we would probably never do that. But, like, <laughs> it, you can see I was on, like, 14%. Because yeah. I just wanted it to be a little closer, but still retain most of the human element mm -hmm. of the uh of the, the way that you played it you know 
I mean, it, 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 it depends on the style of the tune as well, but yeah, with the kind of uh, wonky beats shit, like, um, also when you're playing the bass, like if I'm, when I play the Moog, like I'll be off a little bit, you know? Yeah. And, and that's what gives the groove, you know? Like if the note's just a little bit off, uh, the kick drum, like, it's off. Yeah. Um, and then, or you could have a kick and stare that are pretty straight on, but the hat does all the, you know, the hat will do all the movement. Yeah. So, you know, just, yeah. Um, so I'd say that's how we approach groove. Yeah. Uh, in general. Uh, let's see what else. Um, what are some of our favorite Eurorack modules? So one that we uh, one that we use a lot is um, we use the noise engineering uh, Loquelic Iteritas, which is like a mm -hmm. oscillator with like three modes, and it has really gnarly interactions between two different oscillators that have independent pitches, and you can send it tons of modulation. For a bunch of different parameters, and you just get really gnarly sounds out of it. Like, um, I guess I could drive one in real quick. Like, uh, let's see. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's right nasty. Here. You can make some, yeah, some horrible bass. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and this again, like recording at not a specific tempo, mm -hmm. and doing all this shit live, and yeah. then maybe dropping it into a project at a different tempo, then you get that groove as well because yeah. everything's off. Yeah, you can get really interesting grooves if you program a sequence at, you know, uh, 70 BPM or whatever, and then you load it into an 85 BPM project and just play it on a keyboard or something. You can get these really unexpected kind of rhythms like. Mm -hmm. Um, we've probably used that on tons of songs. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, like, especially like at the halftime 120, if you have all these, like, you know, drones and like, and, and, and all this modulation is done by hand mm -hmm. in such a spacious project, you can, you get all this crazy movement. Yeah. And then, you know, if you add, um, processing and resampling, then you get really interesting with it. Yeah. Um, the Euro rack modules do I like? Uh, just got um, got the IntelliGel Shapeshifter. That's a really cool oscillator. Um, uh -huh. At some point, I'm gonna get a camera on the modular so you guys can see us like messing around with the modular uh, live on on stream. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh, by the way, sorry to everyone who's expecting to have a rave. Um, <laughs> this was always gonna be. <laughs> Um, some, you know, we're doing a production thing, we'll, slightly nerdy. We'll thing. probably do some more, you know, more music, uh, sets type stuff in the future, so hold tight for that. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, uh, how do we motivate slash prepare before a session? We're working on a new project, uh, snacks, <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> snacks have got to be on point for the studio, snack, gotta have studio <laughs> snacks, we uh, like, uh, Snap pea crisps, those are really good. <laughs> Baby bells. Baby uh, bell cheese, super fire. I mean, it, it's whatever, you know, little things that's gonna like perk you up yeah. or, um, but there's n we don't really have a set way of working. Um, motivation, sometimes to be honest, I can't be bothered, but yeah. you know, you just push through. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't the know. The nice thing about working as partners is like, if somebody's like having an off day or just not feeling it, the other person can just take over and that's right. And see what's see what's happening. Yeah. You know? And if you just or, and you can always put the console on, you know. Yeah. And take we, turns. We that's fun the, as well. Uh, Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. The mini Super Nintendo over here. So that, 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 some would really say that's not, working, not. We can just jump on there. Yeah. Maybe that's a boost in productivity. Maybe it's not. Yeah, it might hinder your productivity a little bit, it's, but it's up in the air. You know, <laughs> you, you've got to try different things. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else? Thoughts on Vegemite? Love Vegemite. Alex I'm all about Vegemite, but the best is uh, um, Marmite and the uh, New Zealand kind. That's that's the oh, yeah? that's the bit. Um, <laughs> that's the vibe. Uh, what else? 
Some funny stuff in here. <laughs> uh, have we used the Morphogene? Yeah, I have the Morphogene. I have like a separate rack um, for, uh, it's like a, a mini, uh, it's a tip top audio happy ending kit that's like sitting in my rack mount part of my desk on the left over here. And it's got uh, a Bastel uh, feedback observatory, um, make noise Morphogene, and the uh, Erica plasma drive so that I can like run drums or a bass or whatever through some modules. It's, it's also got an IntelliGel audio interface, so um, it's got like, you can run audio out and just easily run stuff through. Like, I'll just run everything through the plasma drive. And show it so like, it's, it's, it's basically like more like a processing chain for that one, yeah? Yeah, it's just a processing chain mm -hmm. for if I want to throw stuff through your rack, so. Plasma's pretty aggressive, bro. You can get some cool stuff out of it. Yeah. I've got the, uh, pedal version <clears throat> so like let's do the drums maybe and just uh run everything <laughs> through the chain yes. take the head first take down, it down it can be kind of gnarly so here's yeah. here's regular and i'll turn the tip up on so yeah. it's like super insane yeah <laughs> there you go yeah Maybe not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work on every source material, you know, it's like it's better on... Well, you know, chopping that up and layering it on top of the original drum signal, yeah. uh, high pass in it, mm -hmm. it's, you can do lots of cool stuff with it. Yeah, a little bit of reverb, like you can use super gnarly process sounds and just layer them very subtly on top of yeah. whatever you're doing. Um, what else? Uh, favorite width techniques? Um, well, we talked about snacks already. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I have to get the dad jokes in. Um, Haas, yeah, Haas effect is really good. Um, just running stuff through a little bit of reverb. Um, like, mm -hmm. I was doing this track solo. I might put a little bit of plate on it. Like, yeah. a little bit of Lex plate. Like a short um, reverb. Yeah, like, Lex plate on drums is cool. This might be too subtle for y'all to hear on stream, but like, Lex play it with a really short on headphones you'd be able to yeah. hear the difference um so here's like the drums and then like there's the plate and i put it on like maybe five six percent mm -hmm. so like it's super subtle but it just like glues everything together a little bit um i don't do too much imaging um again the like short delay trick works really well i yeah. use that a lot it's like so for uh, obviously not like on the low end um side but anything that's mid-range for bass especially like we did in in this project yeah um you can easily achieve uh a, a width perception without affecting you know everything else um other than that not too much to be honest yeah um i not so modular based in my studio i um, i use the virus a lot um yeah the synth um i've got a ti polar full keyboard version that was my first synth i bought when i was like 20 which makes me sound old as shit. <laughs> no, i'm 35 so yeah no i would have been like 21 22 but i was like the best investment I yeah. did back then, and I'm and I is still my go to synth yeah. because it has a lot of uh, the, the distortion panel and everything about it. Like, you can get some super horrible sounds out of it if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, um, it's great that you have that, and you have you have more like a the traditional uh, you know keyboard sense, mm -hmm. and I have the modular, and uh, that way we can create totally different sounds and then bring them together. Yeah, we've, we've done, done tracks like. Um, I'm trying to think which ones, but where we would, as we do with modular, we would turn the virus on and, you know, take uh, start a patch and completely destroy it, mm. run it through gear um, and record it, and then you know. Uh, yeah, like Dog Star was like a lot of yeah, a lot of that virus. Stuff. Um, also, I think two one six, some of the bass sounds are from the virus. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so what else? Um, uh, and the Moogie's a great mono synth as well, if you can afford one. Um, 
Yeah, so hardware distortion. What what hardware distortion do we have? We have so we just played the uh plasma. The plasma. There's also um the Sherman, which I like a lot, which is a Sherman filter bank. Mm -hmm. Um I've also got one of those. Yeah, it's insane. Uh so I'll put it on the master. <laughs> it's just <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. Being bad. There's probably some stream-related reason why that's feeding back because of the way we have our okay. audio routed. Whatever. Anyway, it's a sick. Uh, it's got two filters in it. Um, there's like a, a filter that can two filters that can be morphed from low to band to high, with like resonance control, and the input gain sounds super sick. Like mm -hmm. it's just a great little distortion slash filter. It's not too expensive in terms of like hardware outboard gear. Um, and it's really great for like adding yeah. warmth to it's, digital it's sounds. It's really good. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a bit crazy, though. Mm -hmm. Like as in, you know, um, or like something like analog heat would be simpler to use for straight sort of from like saturation to yeah. like heavy distortion. You know, yeah. you've got I can't if There's I'm like trying to visualize eight, it. Eight, eight algorithms or something. Eight. You have uh, LFO filter EQ. Um, and you can overbridge it, um, which and yeah. overbridge is still a little bit messy, but you can use it as an insert um, in your project. And I have done that a lot on my DMB stuff. Yeah. Um, and I literally use it on everything. Yeah. Even if it's running, the Moog varies so slightly. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, low pass it and drive it again yeah. to. Uh, you know, um, open up the bass of it, or uh, yeah. run entire drums through it. That's um, electron, mm -hmm. electron, analog electron heat. analog heat. When uh, I said algorithms, two. that's a mistake it, because they're not digital. It's all separate hardware circuits for yeah. the different types of distortion, um, and it has a filter, and it has USB audio. Yeah. It's sick. It's it's around around same it's price as a Sherman, I yeah. think. Yeah. So I've, I'll say. It, um, Filter banks like a little bit more fun in you know yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Uh, if you want something a little bit more straight up, um, I'd recommend the analog heat. Yeah, more versatile. Mm -hmm. But filter bank is pretty crazy too. And yeah, has a unique character to it. For sure. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, so I'm going to send what's. Do we want to show some granulator processing on our synths, and what is that process like? Uh, yeah, we could do that real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so let's load up, like, I don't know, Old Bounce song or something. Um, and I'll just, like, play it, I guess. Here, let's find a granulator. Um, so, yeah, like, one thing I could do is like go in and like let me just grab uh, here's some stuff that we recorded on the shapeshifter, mm -hmm. um, which is a IntelliGel module. So if I play this, hopefully it will sound. So this is some modular stuff, and then like. I would basically turn spray, up the spray a little bit. So it moves around. The spread definitely. Scan yeah. is good, so, so you get some motion through the through the waveform. Mm -hmm. So, if anyone's not familiar with granular synthesis, it's basically chopping up the audio into very tiny little particles called grains, and you can transpose them or play any different part of the file, and it's sort of using that as source material to like create a new sound from that sound. So, there's. Get some really yeah. If you have a MIDI controller, it's cool to assign all the different functions to yeah. knobs and then maybe like draw MIDI so it's continually playing and then you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite fun as well. Yeah, this stuff sounds great with a little bit of reverb. Um, I like Valhalla. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, you know, you can throw a limiter on it, whatever, and get some intense bass sounds out of it. Um, so. You can 
change the time of the scan, which will change like how fast it's moving through the file. Mm -hmm. You can slide around if you want like the random effects. You can change the grain size. Turn it into a ton. with it like yeah. easily turn any incoming audio into you know this like gnarly textural kind of and if you want if you want it to be like a little bit dirtier like I'll just play a little little chord spray up So that's kind of what we do with granulator, um, which is, I would say, our main go-to um, granular yeah. processing. Tool. Granular delay is cool as well. Yeah, grain, grain delay is great. You can do some crazy stuff with that. Mm -hmm. um, um, <clears throat> yeah. What's up, Whittler? <laughs> um, what's she saying? What's up, what's up she? What up? <laughs> he says you're still 20. That's nice. Uh, Thank you. Do we do we use track delay on perk and hats? Feel that helps get that sloppy boom bat rhythm. Uh, not much. Sometimes it's good. Good. Uh, good little trick, though. I guess. Yeah, I do that on EPROM songs sometimes. Um, but I would say I do a lot more like weirdo processing on EPROM songs than I do on on Shades ones. Um, do we smoke weed? <laughs> if I, if I want to have an internal meltdown, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> not really anymore. Yeah. Um, not yeah, it doesn't doesn't really work for me. Um, but uh, I embrace it for everyone else if it works for them. Do you have a novation peak? I do, but yeah. unfortunately, I've only got to play with it very little. But it's it's very good. Yeah. Um, I got a loan from Novation before I left, and yeah. now I don't even know when I'm going to see my studio next. But yeah. um, it's great, uh, but I can go too much in depth because I played with it for about half an hour. But I got some <laughs> great sounds out of it, yeah. um, and it's quite affordable for what it is, ish. Um, yeah. Yeah. Model D is free for iOS now. Yes, it is, and you should definitely get it. Um, mm -hmm. Big up Moog for making that free. Yeah, uh, it's great software. Um, yeah, I got it on the iPad. This that was good. Um, um, I'm just quickly going back because I didn't read fully, but it says it's a good alternative to the virus, and it 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 is. Yeah, right? you can get sort of a similar similar vibe to it. Yeah. Um, the internal distor distortion is great. Um, yeah, so um, I would say as a poly, it's a very good one. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna stand by the virus, but that's just out of preference, you know. Yeah. Um, what else? Plasma pedal. Yeah. Uh, plasma is. Um, yeah. So Game Changer Audio made the plasma pedal. There's also. Erica made the modular version of the plasma pedal, which is basically the same as the plasma pedal, just in your rack format. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a, a rack mount version that has some more features. Um, uh, what else? Can you go over making a spring reverb, like in Chiron, for a snare with a software? Um, what's the software spring? I mean, a software spring, I would, I would grab a uh, couple of spring impulse responses and use like a free impulse uh, response uh reverb um there's a few uh, i remember like the snare. Yeah. snare was just uh, uh <coughs> um, ping pong delay yeah um and then uh crushed like distorted to get that effect yeah um but that was a long time ago I yeah that was four or five years ago yeah made that. but i remember it being like a couple of layers and one of them Having a bounce, you know, mm -hmm. like a sort of direct, um, to give it that that effect. Um, um, 
But yeah, if you want a software spring, uh, there's a couple plugins that do it, but impulse responses are going to sound like the most realistic. Mm -hmm. The only problem is like a spring responds differ differently uh, to each uh, incoming hit moment by moment. So an impulse response is going to basically have the same response to any particular same input. Um, so what you should do is like get a couple different instances of impulse response reverb and maybe modulate between the two of them uh, so you have some change in timbre over time. Uh, that way you'll get the most realistic kind of spring reverb uh, you know, simulation on your computer. But yeah, impulse response reverbs are really cool. You can they basically just uh, get some good recording equipment and go to you know a hall or a jazz club or a cathedral and record a click in the room and the response of the room to that click, the reverb, is recorded and then they do this mathematical operation called convolution which is basically multipl multiplying over time uh, to you know convolve any um, incoming audio so if you put a snare drum it just sounds like the snare drum is in that cathedral or jazz club or whatever um, and you can do the same thing with springs or with uh, hardware uh, reverbs like eventide you know so yeah, impulse response reverbs are awesome. There's uh, a Max for Life convolution. Yeah, reverb, there's a Max for Life, yeah. um, which is free. And yeah, it's great. Yeah. So you should have a look at that. Yeah, the Max for Life is free. If you use Logic or whatever, SIR is free. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, what else? Valhalla. Valhalla is great. Um, how can you achieve more movement out of your already processed respaces? Um, one thing you can do is uh, throw on like a um, a band cut is, is a good trick if you want stuff to be like a little bit more have a little bit more motion and then just like move it up and down, distort it. Um, yeah, and just add automation to all the parameters. Like it can be subtle automation mm -hmm. have more movement. Um, see where are we here uh, what artists are currently inspiring you um, definitely uh, this guy Saruta <laughs> big up Thomas should be on tour with him right now yeah right <laughs> um, a bunch of people uh, in the 140 uh, like uh, Headland, yeah, Headland so. making some dope shit uh, turning on sound. Turning on sound uh, this side of the the water, doing some cool shit. Um, There's a bunch of people. Obviously, um, artists that I'm putting out on on the label. Um, and then yeah, there's just a bunch of bunch of stuff. Drum and bass wise, uh, the Visage guys. I know this is biased because I'm putting out their music soon, but um, yeah, they're making some dope music. Um, from uh, France, yeah. Yeah, it is from Toulouse, uh, and obviously Monty. Uh, but you guys are already familiar with all all that. Um, but um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, can't really think too much right now. Yeah. In this spot. I mean, like in terms of inspiration, like I think also we're inspired by artists that are a bit further afield than mm -hmm. our our like immediate scene. So you know, like. I'm inspired by soundtrack artists and uh, yes, you know soundtracks. people who are working in like ambient space and um, listen to like metal music, you know, uh, just experimental electronic stuff inspires me a lot. Um, you know, Stockhausen. Someone said Arca, definitely Arca. I'm yeah. a huge fan of Arca. Same. Um, Amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else. Um, favorite ambient artists? I'm really into this guy called um, Sleep Research Facility. Um, he did this one album where he recorded this like uh, heater, like one of the old style heaters that has hot water flowing through it that's like built into the wall it's made of metal that was like malfunctioning and making some crazy metallic clicking sounds and he just like turned that into an entire 60 minute ambient thing <laughs> it's, like, it's amazing um 
I like the guy. Um, what's his name? Um, is it Disaster Piece? Disaster Piece is yeah. really sick. He's a soundtrack did... and like video game yeah. music artist. Um, so, he did like, uh, the, it, the movie if it, it follows. It follows. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how I got onto him. Well, you knew already that he. But like we watched that movie, and I was like, that's like the darkest thing. That ever. soundtrack is so dark, man. Um, it's like it's like terif- It's legit terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I was like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do it by yourself. Yeah. Um, music, guilty pleasures. I like happy hardcore a lot, but I mean, I'm proud of that. And I don't know. yeah, it's I know. Really it's not really not that guilty. Yeah. Uh, uh, I yeah. like all sorts, man. Yeah. Uh. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah, what else? Um, uh, people grips. are asking about the Denzel thing. Denzel, yeah. We don't maybe. really know. We'll so. talk about that later, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, might do something else with it. Yeah. Uh, oh, those guys, uh, in terms of music inspiration, oh, we, yeah. we saw these dudes, Injury Reserve, in uh, Australia. We did a couple shows with them, and they were so sick. Um, just like... Yeah crushing it on stage with crazy energy and um just interesting like manipulations of sort of uh you know the hip-hop aesthetic um yeah voice and and beats yeah um if you like death grips or like jpeg mafia that yeah, kind of stuff you're kind of into. like yeah slight industrial edge um just but just sick rap yeah we know richard divine um i've i used to hang out with richard divine a little bit we like went to burning man together fucking 10 years ago or something he's a homie <laughs> talk to him every now and then this guy saying what tricks do you use to glue your kicks bass sub together again um saturn is really good yeah i think we, we looked at our our chain here but i'll just i'll just leave yeah. it but it's uh i mean if we're gluing all of it together literally like we actually use the glue well the glue, the glue is good. quite a lot on the master or something that's gonna pull the uh, your sub channels together. Yeah. Um, but nothing dramatic. Just you know something that it's like it's gonna squash everything a little bit and like push them together. Yeah. Um. um but yeah, Saturn uh, decapitator is really good. There's there's a preset on here called um, 70s record that I use a lot, and um, I'll just mix it in. You know, pretty much dry, mm-hmm. a little bit of wet. Um, Some stock stuff is good. Saturate is good. Um, yeah it's sometimes like, it's good to like uh get your drums ready and just throw on a bunch of effects and see what each effect does and just sort of like have an experimental mindset of like how you're going to go about it and then you know play with the mix like ott sometimes i'll throw ott on the master of a song just to hear oh what elements would benefit from like popping the up. quiets yeah. the quiet mm-hmm. parts rushing up in the background yeah 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 um, so see what's like peaking and not yeah Uh um and then and then like you'd be like oh the hi-hat sounds cool when it's like rushing up behind the kick so maybe i'll throw a little bit of uh a little bit of ott on the hi-hat just so it like rushes up a little more um yeah um so yeah that, that kind of experimental approach to mixing you know um there's there's things that always work like throwing a little bit of glue is always going to glue the drums together a little bit mm-hmm. um you guys asking about gain staging headroom master um in i think in regards to playing out like demos we will smash quite hard you know a little bit louder loud. yeah um but other than that we will for mastering we will bounce very quietly um, and take like any sort of limiter or um, slight compressor off the master and leave it up to uh, we use Bob Mac yeah uh, for all our stuff um, I wasn't familiar well I was I knew of Bob through music but um, when we started working together you suggested Bob and I've been working with him quite closely since then um, he, he understands uh, quite you know what we want to get out of it yeah um, but I um, you know, we a lot want of people... stuff to snap a little more. We want yeah. a little more headroom than most people. Um, we, we, it doesn't have to be super loud. Like um, even recently, I just mastered one of my solo projects, and um, it was too pushed. And I was like, I don't mind having a couple of dBs off my masters if it sounds more dynamic and it sounds nicer. 
like I, I'm not you know like you can always gain on the mixer it's, I, it's, yeah I think that time and history will be kind to people who like added a little more space in their music and it gives it a little more longevity um, um yeah Bob Mack is amazing he, he's mastered both my album both my EPROM albums are Shades album and a ton of our music basically. He's, he's doing my one. He's done my one forty stuff, and he's now doing. Well, me prefer, uh, you know, prefer, uh, my preference is to go to him for my solo stuff. Um, but he's very attentive, and you know, um, we'll go back and forth without any problem, and you know, adjust. Yeah. Um, which is what you want, really. Duke um, Jones says, "Shout out Bob Mack." Yeah, he did. Yes, he and did. Uh, yeah, Greg's album. Easy, Greg. Um. um he uh, also made some amazing music as Mac in a yeah. sort of a choppage slash drum funk, drum funk kind yeah. of uh, subgenre of drum and bass, which is like super technical, detailed stuff, but like funky and interesting. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like between IDM and like classic breakbeat funk stuff. Yeah. Um, really great music. A um, few people asking about whether we'd like to do soundtrack, film, or game design. Um, uh, yeah, I'm into that. Yeah, it'd be fun. We just made a tune that was kind of in that vibe. Yeah. Recently. Um, that, it, it suits the uh, recent times, I would say. <laughs> yeah, kind of a dark, kind of a dark sound, but you know, yeah. most of our stuff is anyway. Um, but yeah, that would be cool to have, you know, actually write to a specific project, um, an extended project would be cool. Um, definitely open to that, especially now that we're probably going to have a lot more studio time in the foreseeing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bring on the dark sounds. Yeah. Roll. <laughs> <laughs> Any producing audio related books you recommend? Yeah. Um, there's one that I really like by a guy called Curtis Rhodes, R O A D S, who is a professor at UC Santa Barbara and, um, basically one of the pioneers of granular synthesis and he wrote this book called microsound uh grab a copy it's amazing it's um basically a deep dive into granular synthesis and all the techniques that you can do with it um which are much more than just like stretching out bass sounds into gnarlier other bass sounds <laughs> like we do like you can do tons of stuff with it um he also has a book called a computer music tutorial which is uh an even deeper dive into pretty much every aspect of software development um, for audio on the computer. Um, Curtis Rhodes, Microsound. Uh, yeah. Um, did Dark Sound's aesthetic come from any other genres like Doom or Black Metal? Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, mm -hmm. Sleep, um, which is like the, you know, quintessential stoner metal band. Uh, Big fan of um, Sun O and uh, Ohm and uh, you know various bands. Uh, Gate Creeper. I was wearing their merch in, on on Instagram. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, you know I like that kind of stuff. I also like just heavy rock and stuff. And those timbres are are really interesting to me. Yeah, Earth is dope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Could we talk about spring? Uh, I might talk about spring on an EPROM stream at some point. Uh, house project. I'll, I'll talk about that on, on an EPROM stream. Yeah. Okay, cool. What else? This mode selector. They're playing Center of the Sun. That's cool. Nice. I love mode selector. They were a massive early inspiration for me. I'm not sure like how much you're into them but they were a huge, I like stuff. A huge inspiration for me they, they're really good at using really simple elements like just a, a sawtooth wave and a kick and a snare and making it super funky and hit super hard mm -hmm. um, I met them at LIB and they were super nice um, yeah. um, um, Hurricane Bass Hurricane Bass is a Moog little fatty um, just going uh, from one octave down to the second octave and the uh, glide time is like all the way up and that's pretty much it and then there's like some processing after the fact like a Haas effect and maybe a little bit of uh, um, plate kind of reverb 
I've been making music since I was 13. I'm not going to tell you how many years that is, but it's a long mm -hmm. time. Uh, <laughs> for me, since I was about like 15 or 16, yeah, call it like, yeah, 15, 16. Um, which someone's, is a yeah. long time <laughs> <laughs> Uh Someone's asking how we did the Live 4 bass. So the Live 4 bass was uh, the Korg MS20. Yep. And I think we ran it through a. I'm just going to get it. Tell them about the MS20. Yeah, the MS20 synth, and from as far as I remember, this was this was a while now. It's like five or six, I don't even know. But oh, yeah, um, through this. yeah, through Versus an amp. A Twenty dollar uh, metal practice amp. Um, yeah, total piece of crap basically, but it has a. Quarter inch input, overdrive switch, more gain, mm -hmm. a voice, which is like some kind of shelf EQ thing, and a headphone out. And the headphone out, I just plug straight into my sound card and it sounds insane. Like yeah. you could mic it also. I mean the speaker's really small, so you won't get the bass if you mic it. But if you if you mic it and and just run the headphone out and like mix those together, you could definitely get some gnarly sounds out of it. So yeah, go to a guitar store and buy like a cheap practice amp. If it has a quarter inch out, that's the vibe because then you've got, you know, this gnarly overdrive yeah. that you're never going to get out of software. Um, so yeah, I was running the MS-20 straight into that and we recorded a bunch of just gnarly messing around with the MS-20. Yeah, just like jamming uh, um, riffs and then somehow chopped them up and made some kind of sense out of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was cool. And it still still stands up that tune actually. We still play that, don't we? Yeah, still play that. Yeah. I think yeah, the MS20 is like a really good starter synth. Uh, Chark said that, and that's absolutely true. I think it's fantastic starter synth. It's cheap-ish in terms of analog synths, and it's uh, got like a patch bay on it, which is awesome. Um, in terms of like getting into modular and signal flow. Mm -hmm. um, What's our fave shades track? Mm. I don't know. I am really fond of the like weird beatless things that we do. Um, I like that direction a lot. The soundscapey things. Yeah. Um, so we've got we've done we've got a couple of new things. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. So the one that we close our sets with is uh, um, Nullifier. Yeah. And I really like that one mostly Alex I think and it's like what is that sub 37 doing this sort of riffy yeah. thing that just slowly builds and builds and builds yeah I did it all by hand so it took me like quite a few goes to get like right because um yeah you know I was made a patch that I liked and then I was like this is really cool but I don't know if this is going to work with beats or you know it, it wasn't that kind of sound uh i was like it sounded better on his own so i was like i'll just make something ambient out of it but i wanted to do that sort of build that tension from mm -hmm. zero to a hundred yeah. over time and i did that through like slowly open it opening up the you know work playing with the envelope and the filter and the oscillators and then like slowing things down and then bringing them back up and, yeah um so but i did it like you know in in one instance so it yeah. was it took me ages because i was like oh that's almost yeah. right but it's not yeah <laughs> and then also uh i know it sounds ridiculous i could have done that post but i was also doing the, the slight reverb and delay yeah. right analog um i i i like that track those kind of things yeah. are fun to yeah almost totally. exercises yeah like threnody and back and forth and like these sort of ambient weird tunes that mm. we're just going completely outside of our our typical you know, boom bap kind of structure. I think those are the most uh, liberating to create, and then they tend to be very rewarding to hear on a record. Yeah. When you're in the middle of this like gnarly record, and you've got this sort of interlude, or you know, something that it, it's an interlude, but it's also its own its own thing. You know, its own yeah. kind of song. Um, 
And I, I'm excited about a lot of the new stuff we've been doing, actually, because yeah. obviously it's newer, so you know it's, it's it's normal to feel more excited about that. Um, some guys asking about merch. Um, not 1985 merch. There's more stuff coming. Things are slowing down because of you know obviously the worldwide situation. Everyone's kind of affected by it. So, mm -hmm. but there there's stuff coming, and so there will be shades as well. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of you know. Uh, it being made um, so you know as, as fast as we can um, um, let's that? see well, let's see some more shades related uh, let's see uh, did I study computer engineering no are we um, in the shoe game yeah, <laughs> for myself shoe game? yes yes um, unfortunately Alex, Alex more so than me <laughs> um I'd say it's one of my, yeah, one of my only vices, really. Um, but yeah, I'm a sneakerhead. I have been for a long time. I love it. Yeah. How do you stay out of a creative rut? Um, I think one good way is uh, start in the morning and uh, force yourself to have a time limit and make a, a few sketches. So let's say I'm getting in the studio at 10 in the morning. I've got your, your cup of coffee or whatever. You say 10, 10 to 10.30, I'm going to make one sketch. 10.30 to 11, I'm going to make another sketch. And then you stop at noon. So you've got four sketches. And then you take your break. You give your ears a rest. You eat some lunch. And you come back and you listen to your sketches, hopefully bounced. And you say, oh, this one's the best. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'll spend the next two hours developing that. Um, and the rest are, you know, sample fodder. Or you can throw them away, whatever you want to do. But that way you're not... Um, chasing a dead end down the rabbit hole you know working on some tune that's never gonna be great yeah. um that's a good way to to keep inspiration i find like very rarely i will push through on something uh, yeah. for a long time i just i don't know uh, if it's not popping like or vibing in like you know the early stages uh, unless i think it's a really good idea and hard to execute yeah i might pursue it but Honestly, I think, you know, the best tunes always kind of write themselves or, you know, feel natural yeah. um, in general. There might be, you know, um, uh, exceptions, but um, what else are people saying? Do we work on music every day? Uh, no, we don't. We take breaks. Um, you know, it's important to have life work balance, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to play video games and hang out with your kids and go outside and enjoy the sun sunlight yeah <laughs> um uh we are practicing social distancing right now so we're working a lot um, yeah we have been for a week already just out of our own will trying like you know i'm sure everyone's bored of this anyway but yeah. you know trying to do our bit and i think everyone should as well because i see people like going on like it's going it's on. all blessed and everything but yeah anyway i'm not gonna preach um <laughs> yeah but yeah um, like no we we i think for especially uh, the way i've been doing things the last couple of years is having touring blocks and writing blocks so you know I, I try and condense the touring to like a month a month and a half and then you know by the time you come off tour you're like hungry to make music again yeah um but everyone's different i find it quite hard to write on the road um just with a laptop because i rely on all my gear and yeah. you, you probably do as well although we have to be fair like we have done stuff like just randomly in hotel rooms that have turned into tunes but yeah um or beats on the plane yeah yeah bopping like a madman on yeah. the plane everyone's like what is this <laughs> Sh guy doing the seat, like <laughs> doing gun fingers <laughs> yeah sir please would you calm down <laughs> oh man um how is Gustav Dore inspiring us? Well, I think like there's a strong cross pollination between the visual aesthetic and the audio aesthetic, you know, like, mm. you know, I keep like a bunch of books in the room outside the studio. And like, if we get bored, we can go out there and flip through them and, you know, uh, inspires song titles. It inspires the general aesthetic, like yeah. the mood, you know, um, so you know we'll look at artists like Dore or or even like modern contemporary artists that are that are interesting to us like uh sin eater who's mm -hmm. done some work for you um 
Waggy well, Ron that did the album covers. Yeah, Waguna well, who did who did our album covers. Uh, how did we meet in the first place? We met in uh, New Zealand actually at a Northern Bass Festival. Yeah. Um, and uh, sort of out of mutual respect, and we we're like, we should make some tunes sometimes, sometime, and we uh, ended up working together. Mm. Um, let's see. Yes. Yeah. What up, Rapping. safe? What up, safe haven? Wearing the shirt, rocking the the Fubar shirt. Nice shirt. Um, Cop one. Yeah. Um, fiction novel Rex. Uh, yeah, I, I just read Annihilation by um, Jeff Vandermeer. I like that one a lot. Um, I just read uh, a book called uh, Child of God by um, Cormac McCarthy, which is amazing and insane. Uh, all, all the Cormac McCarthy books are amazing. Um, it's kind of Americana, westerny type stuff, but really dark and weird, and just fantastic writing. Sekiro um, streams when? Sekiro streams. <laughs> I just got Alex on Sekiro. Uh, so sick. We're up to um, the horse rider guy whose name I forget. Um, and he's absolutely battering me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting the, it's a tough game, but it's yeah. sick. Rewarding when you beat a boss. Um, I don't know, you never know, we've got time on our hands now. Yeah. Um, if you want, I mean, it would just be me getting murked the whole time, but... Yeah. Um, uh, it's a um, 140 record is dropping next. That's the next release on the label. So, um, I know a few people have been asking, so... Uh, yeah, we've been playing one of them in our set. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm having a... I'm having a fun writing at that tempo but um yeah so that'll be coming out on the label um very soon yeah uh info next week actually um someone says uh put us in the put me in the mindset when you guys made algor mortis so we did kind of a breakdown of algor mortis on the uh what was that accelerator uh yeah. thing interview that we did but basically algor mortis started as one of those long droney uh sessions in um in the modular so it's like a long drone that we recorded on the noise engineering loquelic mm -hmm. iteritas uh and then we used sampler to ableton live sampler to um jump between different points yeah. in that in that recording um so you're basically playing a melody uh but the melody is changing in timbre uh and you can have it be randomly or you can draw in the automation yourself to jump between different start points in that drone so if you're at a different start point you're going to get a slightly different timbre uh in the the note that you're playing back um so we recorded a bunch of uh iterations of that process and then um sequenced it uh and that sort of became algor mortis yeah basically um all stemming from modular, that one. Yeah, mostly mostly modular sounds. I think I'm about to. Well, I'm definitely gonna get on the modular train at some point. Yeah. Um. Shout out to your cousin Lit. <laughs> what <up? laughs> Um. Yeah. Shout out Nick P. Um. How to get a dark vibe for a track? Well. I don't know. I mean, like, I think that it, it depends a lot on the scales that you work with and, you know, mm -hmm. um, the progression, like, you know, progression of chord progressions can be dark, uh, scales can be dark, sounds themselves can be dark. Um, Very minor a lot of the time. A lot of dissonance and things as a well. A lot of, as much dissonance as possible, basically. Uh, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of half tone intervals. Uh, you know, if you, like, that thing I was playing with Granulator, if I'm playing, playing a, a fourth, but also playing a half tone, that's like a really gnarly... It's like, it's like the classic uh, Matrix, uh, yeah, or like spirit. Edge Russian Optical. Yes, yeah, Spirit kind of pad. Yeah. 
but yeah, I guess it depends on the notes you're playing and, and the source of sound. Like anything dissonant, distortion will have will add aggression and yeah. And uh, you want it to be a like to be dark. You want it to be aggressive, but not over the top. You want it to be like menacing rather than mm. violent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, suspense. Yeah. And uh, any good granular hardware. Um, they re. Oh, what was it called? What's yeah, there, there's one granular like standalone box thing. Um, I forget again? what it's called. I'll send you a link. I remember a while Yeah. Um, I have to remember that one. Um, there is something. It's not cheap, um, and you can probably achieve very similar things, you know, with granulator. Yeah. Um, in modular world, there's clouds is really mm -hmm. good. Uh, nebulae. Somebody mentioned nebulae. Uh, and um, morphogen can sort of do granular-ish stuff as well. Um, and then, um, but I love granulator. There's so much control. It's really easy to record, and it's just it's just cool and easy and fun. Um, also, you can get uh, GR1. That's the one. GR1. One. Yeah. There you go. Um, um, so there's also VCV rack. You can there's like a open source um, clouds for VCV rack, which is like a software. Uh, Euro rack thing. Oh yeah, that's cool um, as well. Yeah. Um, someone was asking, what are some good free plugs? Uh, I really like. Um, so there's this plugin we just got. Um, let me look in my uh, Max for Live stuff here. So there's this one guy who made a bunch of really cool plugins. Um, I'll just load one up real oh, quick yeah, so you guys can see it. So here's um, one called Kamasi, um, and all of the like info text is in. I don't think that that's any like real language. I think it's just gibberish, but it kind of looks like. Um, a Moroccan language, but I'm not yeah. sure if it is. It looks um, like North African. Anyway, you've got these scales that are built in that are like microtonal scales. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play from C up to C, and you guys can hear how weird it sounds. So that's like a normal C. So it's got this like um, maqam built in, which is like an Arabic or Persian uh, scale. Although maqams are, are different from scales in ways that I'm not really qualified to explain, but like um, basically some of these notes are not Western chromatic notes. Like that is not an E, and that's not an F, right? So they, they can give you this sort of interesting Middle Eastern flavor. Obviously, it's not going to be compatible with any other, uh, you know, <laughs> Western scales. Yeah. So you'd have to do your whole song in this kind of thing. But that's fine. Like you know, do a song in in Arabic scales, create some interesting interesting sounds. Um, I just realized I'm I'm not on uh, Ableton Live. Let me uh, oh, yeah. let me show you guys. And then you've got some controls. So this is Kamasi. You've got these different scales. I like that one the most. Mm -hmm. Very plaintive, kind of wailing, kind of almost vocally quality. Um, and you can change stuff like the attack and decay, although it's all labeled in this weird language um, yeah 
Um, so yeah, really digging that. The same guy made like some other cool stuff like this thing is called um, Palmas. So clap it's got generator. claps and then you can, it's a clap generator. And you can increase the spread. You can change the number of claps. There's one, up to 32. You can make some super fat, thick claps. It's got reverb, but it's, normally it's pretty dry. Um, this yeah. is the spacing of the claps. So it's great if you just feel like you have some clap samples, but none of them are really doing it, and you, you want like, and also this one's gonna sound like different every single time because it's you know randomly generating these claps, so it sounds different from sounds different from yeah. so you get this like organic quality to the claps. Um, super and sick. Live um, like. Yeah. Um, let me see. Open the next window. Um, yeah, I forget the name of the guy who makes these, but if you go on Max for Live and look for uh, Komasi or Palmas, you will find them. Come and then you, you can just look at, click on the username and you'll find like all the other stuff that this guy made. Um, jump back in the chat here. Um, so yeah. It's, uh, is it microtonal? It's, okay, so it's not, um, it's not Phrygian, it's not Gypsy Minor, technically. It's like a macomb, so it's it's not a Western scale at all, and it can't really be expressed in a Western scale. Um, it's it, You could call it microtonal, but that's not a, a term that like a Persian guitar player would apply to this. It's like you have some half tones, and you have mm -hmm. some whole tones, and you, and you have some quarter tones, right? So the quarter tones are what make it, give it that sort of Persian sound. Um, Am I worried about Western scales when I write music? I mean, I consider Western scales and I use Western scales in a lot of music. This is sort of a newer exploration is like using these Persian scales or macombs. Um, uh, if you do microtonal stuff, it won't blend into a DJ set. Yeah, that's true, but mm -hmm. we don't really worry about that kind of stuff because like, we don't we don't worry about mixing in key. I don't, I don't um, ever mix in key, man. Uh, yeah. Um, we tend to mix in a sort of there's like a dramatic tension and then like boom like something's different and it's a new yeah. song or we'll sort of feel it out i mean a lot of times we're working in a minor because it's easy to play so a lot of our tunes are in a minor so i guess we're we're mixing in key by default a lot of the time um yeah and a lot of it is just dissonant noise so yeah, yeah. sufi sufi plugins is the name of this guy yeah. thank you nice uh, hound track um yeah um <laughs> some people got <laughs> any go to any uh go to drum packs that we like to use um the ones yeah the premiere one is really good um i used some ones by like ill mind who's like a hip-hop producer who's really yeah. good those are great um, um there's like eight packs i think the yeah. ill mind ones yeah ill mind ones are sick we've used those a fair bit for individual stuff uh i'm trying to think we make a lot of our own stuff as well, like, yeah. or like chop up things over time. Yeah. Um, well, I'm trying to think. I'd need to open my laptop. Yeah. Um, yeah, Illmind's a good start. There's a lot of stuff on Reddit. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff on Reddit you can find. Mm. Um, we tend to uh, layer in like Foley sounds underneath our stuff a lot. Like if you go on uh, freesound.org, there's like Mm -hmm. You type in like chains or, uh, you know, metal or sword or whatever. You can get all these crazy like cool metallic sounds that are great for um, layering underneath Effects, snares and kicks yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah, so that way you can take like whatever standard, you know, snare and make it really interesting. Do we fit samples from long recording sessions to match the tempo of your track? Not really, unless we... Uh... We would, for example, the other day we wrote a 160 tune, so we sequenced a 160, mm -hmm. but in general we'll just uh, record freely yeah. and, and then resample it if we need to, you know, um, match the tempo. 
Uh, yeah, like we recorded the uh, machine drum uh, SPS one electron machine drum. Um, ran it through the Sherman and got some like gnarly kind of one sixty uh, mm-hmm. distorted distorted footwork type stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what's the festival you guys want to play that you haven't yet? Um, I'd really like to play Outlook, which Alex has played a bunch of times. Yeah. Uh, it's our dream that we're trying to manifest playing in a castle, uh, preferably in northern or eastern Europe. Um, but uh, yeah, really a castle anywhere would be a yeah. kind of vibe. Um, so we kind of want to start our own thing and play in a castle. Yeah. But yeah, I don't <laughs> know. I'd like to play fitting. Sonar. It would be really fun. Like I've always wanted to play Sonar. Um, sonar. We were yeah. yeah, we had an offer one year, but we were already unfortunately <coughs> built. Um, what else? I mean, uh, there's a bunch of stuff, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> that's the other problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, Outlook is great. Um, yeah, fingers crossed for the future of music festivals. We're all going to have to work really hard to get them back off the ground in the next couple of years. Um, and, uh, We'll have to support each other and you know the whole music industry is gonna have to come together to, to build this thing back up but mm-hmm. i'm confident that we can do that um do we draw inspiration from berserk i personally do i got a few books in the other room of berserk i don't yeah. know if alex has read it but it's it's a vibe uh yeah i like some anime and, and manga um shades in a castle yeah that's a goal it's a big goal <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, somebody says they have a castle. Oh nice. yeah, where's that? <laughs> Do you Airbnb your castle or <laughs> yeah? Uh, <laughs> um, What's the green room like in the castle? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dungeon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are our favorite foods? Uh, sushi. Yeah. No, number one. Sushi probably. and then. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of Asian cuisine um, and Mexican. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we love food. I'm like, it's little. Not many things get me excited as yeah. much as food these days. Yeah. I mean, we also love like snacks, like Takis and Doritos. For I'm us and terrible. I eat the purple so Doritos shit. are fire. The only reason why I run is to stay sane and be able to eat and snack freely. Uh, yeah. Within reason. Yeah. What's your opinion on foghorns? Over it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no disrespect, but you know, yeah. it's well, it's it's just a trend. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. I don't really have too much to say on the subject. <laughs> it's, it's like anything, you know, something that becomes popular and then everyone rinses it yeah. until it's dead in the water. And, we like yeah. we like old school sounds too, like Reese's and stuff. You know, like we love Reese's. Yeah. But- we also Very influenced by rave, you know, like yeah. 90s. Um, uh, yeah, fuck ones. Um, Advice from my state. It's good to have physical things that you do to like move around the studio a little bit, like sit in the back, uh, listen to your tunes. Uh, you can dance around. Like I like to dance around to tunes a little bit. Um, Someone's asking it is. Um, Black Heart, com- right now, but. <laughs> Black Heart Communion Repress? We have that. Um, uh, do you we- happening? There's there's Black Heart Communion tunes. Uh, the, the EP is, is still available on... Uh, uh, if you just Google Black Heart Communion vinyl, you should be able to find it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Other, other ways of, like, staying motivated, though, are, like... Uh, yeah, like have a uh, kendama in your studio that you can play with um, or just like something to keep your mind limber, you know, mm-hmm. uh, anything basically. Uh, have little toys in your studio to play with, take breaks. Do some exercise, drink, free studio. Drink tea. Um, Do a couple push-ups if things aren't flowing. <laughs> uh, better to rain final repress happen i don't know yeah. vinyl vinyl represses are a little tough right now because a 
one of the main vinyl plants in the world burnt down and it, vinyl is like way backed up. Yeah. And B, uh, Corona is like screwing everything over. Uh, yeah, you see the SNES controller in the background. We got the SNES on deck. I'm well, playing Super Metroid 2 right now. Uh, lots of good Metroid. DMB sample packs. Um, I, 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 I sourced a lot of stuff from Dogs on Acid, which is back up and running now. I don't know how far the archive goes back now, if they've rehosted wow, Dogs like, on Acid. Yeah, but there's some absolute gold on there. Yeah. You know, if you want uh, all the classic breaks, um, a lot of like uh, for, foreign producers put up uh, sample packs. Yeah. Um, we've, we've used a couple of them. Um, yeah, that's a good source. Um, but I don't tend to go for DMB sample packs because, you know, they're made by other producers and inevitably you're going to end up sounding like yeah. everyone else. I try and avoid sample packs, although I can't be a hip, you know, I'd be a hypocrite to say I don't use them, but not necessarily DMB ones. Um, you know, um, so yeah, have a dig around. Yeah. You know, um, but it's or just way use more like boom bap drums and like pitch them up a little bit. You yeah. Know, use use things that are not intended as as drum and bass drums. You know, it's like when drum and bass started, there was no drum and bass sample packs. There was just hip hop and the whole DNA of uh, break beats from uh, 1970 to present. You know, mm. um, it's like you just go back and find some interesting rim shot from a, an old record or find something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, or just record yourself banging on a piece of metal. <laughs> so <laughs> Anything, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you ever go to the dance floor anymore? <laughs> yeah. I like to dance, you know. I like to also experience the music from that perspective. Um, have I made any DMV? Yeah, I used to, I used to uh, spin DMV, and I've got tons of DMV records out there, and um, yeah. none of it I would play or like let you guys hear, but <laughs> it never got very good. But it sort of like cut my teeth in terms of. I like, want to hear some E from oh, DMV man, from back in the day. <laughs> it's not tight, but it's... give me a signal <laughs> on the chat if you want to. <laughs> oh man. It's... Um... I, I, I barely got to the point where I would like have maybe considered releasing or playing one of the tunes and then I switched to being EPROM because yeah, yeah, DMB yeah. is so demanding in terms it's, of your technical production level. It's, um, it's, it's hard, man. Um, but it's very rewarding in terms of learning, and, you know, I think, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's very specific. It's kind of also, you know, I don't want to say limited, but with the tempo it's, it is literally limited it's all got to hit that same yeah um th there is that. a kind of thing you know as much as you know you can be inventive and uh but i just feel like i'm waffling on now yeah. um which is what i usually do it's fine um no but there's there's like a collective acceptance of a certain loudness standard in drum and bass that doesn't leave a lot of room mm. for experimentation i would say you know and a certain certain structure in terms of DJ. Where, where do we get Sound Clash reggae voices from? From yeah, sound we, from yeah. Sound Clashes. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's I'd say sound like clashes. yeah, Sanders um, like been on that for for a while. Um, but yeah, like any Sound Clashes, any live recordings, <coughs> or you know, there's there's so much on the internet that like on YouTube literally. Um, yeah, someone wants a good all-purpose mic portable recorder. Mm. Uh, have a zoom. Can't say I know much in that department. Uh, I have a zoom and a task cam. I like this task cam, but this was like, I don't know, seven years ago I got this probably, but like, uh, you just get one of these task cam portable audio recorders and, you know, I made, I made the whole uh, Kuraku EP on this thing, like, not on it, but I just recorded straight from a mixer into this thing. You know, it's just got some decent stereo mics and, you know, it's great for if you're out and about and you hear some, like, weird sound and want to record it. Or, like, another thing I did is, like, talking about impulse response reverbs. I, like, take this thing to this tunnel that's in Portland and just re hit record and just clap and then you've got this clap that's like reverberating through the tunnel and then you use that as an impulse response so it's like uh roll your own impulse responses um you know you can do that 
you're going to get like not a perfect impulse response because the clap is not the same as a full frequency range click, but good enough for, you know, reverberating your snares a little bit, get some interesting timbres. What was the cake edit you guys were playing in your set? Uh, I, uh, something I just pulled together real quick. Yeah. Um, just for um, our live sets. Yeah. It's it's not like a remix or anything. It's more like an edit, you know? Yeah. Just took the original and like reversed and did some kind of fun stuff with it. But it's just purely to have something, you know, a little edit of our own to spice up the set a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to do if you're putting together a DJ set is like just make subtle edits, you know, just put your personal spin on every tune you play. Like, you know, it'll set you apart from other DJs who are just playing mm -hmm. the standard whatever beats, you know. Um, how are your ears after all these years? Actually, pretty good. Um, I've always been wearing custom uh, molded plugs, uh, minus 15s. I've got two pairs actually, one minus 15, one minus 19 dB. And if you're actively going out um, or producing, well, in the studio, it doesn't really apply. But if you're playing out or going out a lot, I would really recommend looking after your ears, man. Um, yeah. Uh, and it's they're not <coughs> cheap, but trust me, you can't put a, a, a price on your hearing. Like, yeah, you know. and if you want cheap ones, uh, you can get ones that are not custom by mm -hmm. uh, Edemotic. I just dropped the name in the chat. Um, and then for molds, uh, you can go to AS. Is it ACS? ACS. ACS. Yeah, ACS. They're worldwide. Um, so you can <coughs> find an agent somewhere that would take impressions and do them for you. Yeah, and musicians, uh, you know, they'll set up at festivals and take take molds at the festival and yeah. send you earplugs. Um, it's definitely a good move. Not something that I do personally. <laughs> it's, a good yeah. move. it's it's hard to catch a vibe for me uh, when it, I'm spinning. It is a weird. Uh, feeling at first because you feel like uh, well it, you know it brings you down uh, volume wise but you feel um, it, it's like you're having sort of a, almost an internal resonance you know yeah. with the earplugs but as a DJ I find it, it it's easier for you to focus on like if you have like crappy monitors then it will filter out some of the frequencies yeah. and you, it's, I find it easier to focus in on the mix yeah um, and yeah, it's going to save your ears, so I recommend it. But you know, uh, each to their own. Mm -hmm. um, best ways to support us while we're not touring: buy music on Bandcamp. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, uh, and al and also like if you can't buy stuff, which is totally understandable in the current situation, like just a retweet or telling anybody about us is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, Liking, retweeting, sharing our stuff, our content is amazing and well, helps us out a lot. Yeah, you know we understand everyone's in the same situation. So yeah, but you know whatever little help and, and that goes for anything. It's not even you know just music, but um, uh, yeah. Um, I mean. This is my first uh, stream. It's, yeah, Alex's it's, first stream. It's, he's, he's doing a fantastic job. It's cool. Like, thanks for uh, coming in and asking questions. I've enjoyed it, actually. I was a bit nervous, but it's, it's cool. Yeah. Um, what kind of music do we listen to together? I mean, like, uh, Alex is usually the one putting me on to, like, some new rap. And he'll be like, oh, this, yeah. is, this album's out. And I'm like, yeah, sick. This is awesome. Uh, and I tend to, like, throw on the jazz station in Portland <laughs> and, like, yeah. listen to whatever's on there. But a lot of the jazz station is, is called KMHD, and in Portland it's amazing. And they have live DJs for 24 hours a day, and they play like the cuttiest, coolest music, and they have like interesting shows. And just shout out to KMHD. You can tune in on your like um, Amazon Echo or whatever, or via iHeartRadio on the internet. You just say, you know, Alexa, play KMHD. Hopefully that triggers somebody's Alexa to actually play KMHD. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, also yeah, a good source of sample music. Yeah, and yeah, if you can Shazam stuff and be like, oh, I'm going to sample this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've... Not that we would ever sample other people's music. Not a release it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
how long do we plan to keep Shades going? Hopefully forever. Um, have you applied to be a Twitch affiliate? We have to be a affiliate first and then a partner. I don't, I don't really know how the path works, but yeah, we're, we're sitting here talking to y'all so we can get our Twitch game up, basically. Yeah. And because it's fun. I might, um, I might do a little stream maybe at some point for my one. Uh, play some tunes or I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah. We have got time on our hands. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, SoundCloud and Twitch announced a partnership on Friday that allows people to fast track to affiliate status. That's amazing. That's really good. I think that Twitch sees what's happening and the massive influx of Mm -hmm. musicians who are going to be moving over to the platform um i started just doing it for fun when you know three months ago before it was cool and then, like <laughs> now it's just like everyone's yeah, you, you're a trendsetter, man. <laughs> <laughs> but i didn't really like stick with it i just did a couple streams but yeah now it's it's going to be a, a big thing i think a big platform for musicians yeah. it's a rad platform it's really fun to be able to interact with people in real time um yeah. Uh, There's a lot of questions. I'm trying to keep up. A lot up of questions. Here. Kill a P samples we use. Kill a P. Well, we did a tune with Kill a P. We did Alarma with Kill a P. Yeah. Um, yeah, Alarma was an original. Hopefully, we do another tune with Kill a P at some point. Yeah, well, I think we will. I sp spoke to him a while back when we did a show. Um, yeah. People saying thank you, thank you. Um, How was playing with Porter? It was amazing. Porter's a sweetheart. Love him. Um, what else? Do you think streaming your music production kills the magic of new music? Well, we haven't streamed our music production yet, so I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Um, I know people who do tons of production on stream. Uh, Matt Zo does production on stream. I think it's um, great for people to get an insight. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, and, you know, the, the ability to uh, have a sounding board for, like, people can, like, make suggestions in the chat if that's something that we're interested in. Like, you guys can, you know, send us samples or whatever. Um, that could be something fun to do in the future is, like, have people submit samples and, like, play with them, uh, you know, on stream. Yeah. Uh, who's your favorite hardcore artist? Someone said in caps, so I assume they really want to know. So, who's my favorite happy hardcore artist? Uh, I don't really know. I don't know. I just listen to like DJ mixes. So, I had this roommate in college who's fun, happy hardcore, and he, he put together like all these DJ mixes. So, I'll just throw those on, and they're, they're all like you know, 96 to 2000 kind of happy hardcore. Um, mm -hmm. There was a Happy Core like forum that he was on, and like, so his name was a uh, DJ Grimace, like the uh, purple guy from the McDonald's ads. And oh wait, is that McDonald's? Or, yeah, Mc Grimace, right? Uh, and he had this mix called like Histrionic, and a couple other ones. You could Google it. Uh, they're sick mixes. He was like a turntablist Happy Core DJ. Uh, I'm probably not personally gonna make any Happy Hardcore, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, what else? What else? Well, we've been rolling for what, two hours? Yeah, two hours. Pretty wow. good. Okay. We're going to stream video games. It might be fun. Stream some <laughs> Super Nintendo. So, oh, dude, Alex is like going in on uh, Donkey Kong Country right now. <laughs> trying to beat that. That's my shit, man. Yeah. It's nostalgia uh, at its best um, out of Donkey Kong, man. This guy has asked you about Welcome to London like a hundred times. Oh, so I'm sorry, I didn't see that. What, <laughs> What's the state what's of the Welcome to London flip so heavy? Um, I don't know, man. Like, because uh, I got the acapella through a promo and then I just made it for... Was it for Keep Hush? I can't remember. And I've been using it as my intro in a lot of sets. But yeah. I don't really have a plan to release it. And I, I mean, I, it's not my... You know, the acapella is flow down. It's not, you know, it's not original work. So I'd have to, you first of all... Clear see if it. they like it yeah if they'd want to do something with it yeah. um so I, I don't really know man i kind of made it sort of just as an intro yeah so uh yeah not really much more i can say on that um 
Uh, maybe I'll reach out to them. I don't know. We'll see. Um, are we producing more? Is it just Q and A? We're probably just going to do Q and A for the rest. Um, probably jump back on the production stream at, at a, in a future future stream. Yeah. Uh, do we use stock live kits? Yeah, I use stock live kits. Um, you know, the uh, if I want uh, drum machine stuff, I'll just use the 606 or the 808 or the 909. Um, mm. I said on Twitter that I don't care if anyone samples my music. For example, would you be mad if a rapper sampled or rapped over one of your tracks and released it? That's a little different. That's not really sampling, I would say. That's just like using the beat, which is different. Um, yeah. uh, I wouldn't be mad if they put it on SoundCloud and, you know, credited me. If they tried to release it commercially, obviously that wouldn't fly. But if you're just sampling like a kick or a snare from one of my songs, I really don't care. And like, you know, if you're doing something interesting with it, then by all means, like, go crazy. I'm not going to sue you. You know, mm. I've used samples and yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not too like stressed about it. <laughs> yeah, it would be hypocrites to get mad if someone. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, can if I you ripped it from SoundCloud and played it out live, <laughs> it'd be a bit of a numpty, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, like you don't rip from SoundCloud, don't like, do it, that's man. just not, that's, that's just uncool. Don't play tunes you're not supposed to have, like, Basically, that's just yeah. an OG, OG Yeah, if code. you get sent the music, you know, you, you've got kind of, I don't want to say earn it, but, you know, it comes naturally, people will send music if you get to a level where yeah. you're supposed to get that music. Yeah. And I understand people get impatient and stuff, but not to play it out as in your DJ set. Yeah. That's just not cool, man. I mean, if you are like sending us tunes and your your tunes are dope enough for us to play out, then we would have no problem sending you tunes. Exactly. So yeah. Basically, the best way to get tunes is to give tunes. Um, uh, what else? Um, somebody asked. Uh, um, what was it? Uh, <laughs> Donkey Kong bongos. Yeah, that might be a vibe. Actually, the music in Donkey Kong Country is sick, sick. and the, the water especially levels. the water level. Yeah, uh, I forget who the composer is, but that's it's really dope. Um, Son Hollow did a remix of Donkey Kong Country. Wow, I didn't I did not know that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Any new games we've been getting into? Sekiro. We're, I've been playing Sekiro. Alex has been playing. We just yeah. got him into it. Um, he swears a lot when we play it, but oh, I, I get a bit frustrated. <laughs> I think he's enjoying it though. I feel like it's a lot of other people. Yeah. Would, yeah, it's quite a tough game. Yeah, it's pretty rough. I mean, but yeah, uh, <laughs> the worst um, side of me comes out. <laughs> uh, I've been playing. Uh, Super Mario Maker 2 is probably my number one game right now. Yeah, on the um, Switch, Rayman's pretty sick. Uh, oh yeah, I'm a, yeah. I've been I was playing that before I left. Um, I'm so gutted I left my Switch at home, man. <laughs> um, maybe someone could send it to you actually. Might be a move. Probably take ages. I'll just nick yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, playing some Pokemon Sword. Uh, playing Mario Maker 2. Uh, I haven't gotten on Animal Crossing yet, but I might jump on that at some point. Um, this is a collab with Will Smith going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, what else? Uh, favorite Apex Twin album? My favorite Apex Twin album is Melodies from Mars, which is actually a bootleg album, but it's really good. Um, you should check it out. It's uh, definitely a lesser known Apex album. And then Selected Ambient Works Volume 2 is also my second favorite, I would say. Um, yes, please. I would love to come to Hawaii with Sando and play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, Hawaii is the best. Uh, not going to go there right now, obviously, because yeah. respect for the Hawaiian people. And absolutely, I'm not going to be a tourist right now. Uh, but yeah. Um, as soon, day, as, we, as soon as we can, I'd love to come to Hawaii. Um, what else? Yeah, Square Pusher's amazing. Uh, 
Why is it so hard to see us play, perform? Well, it's we don't play as much as we could because we have our individual, um, you know, tours. Yeah. Um, and it takes a lot of planning because of that. You know, our respective teams having to find windows where we can all play together and. Um, it, there's a lot, a lot of work goes into making a tour happen, and it's it's not that easy. So we try our best, you know. And then, yeah. and for me, I'm having to go back and forth to the states a lot. It's it's quite consuming, but obviously we try and do our best. Um, yeah. But we will be doing a tour um, as soon as we can. Well, like in the in the near future when we as soon as are it's allowed safe to. And, yeah, we can put it together when it's safe. <clears throat> Yeah, we became friends through, uh, we met at a festival in, in uh, New Zealand and then we made some beats together yeah. for Foreign Beggars uh, in LA. And then some of the beats didn't, didn't end up getting used because uh, they were like too crazy, basically, for anyone to rap over. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, if something's too full frequency range, like you, you're not going to be able to get a rapper to fit in there sonically in the mix. So mm -hmm. we're like, we have all these crazy beats, so let's just put them out as shades right so yeah and i think the name shades came from a uh, gustav dore via dante's inferno mm -hmm. thing book um a lot of questions about dmb stuff yeah um kind of trying to keep it shades um yeah um there's a eprom shades dub that's actually going to come out hopefully this year What's that? Uh, the one that he played after after Welcome to London in the Key Push set. Second tune in the Key Push. Oh, yeah. It's an EEPROM ID, right? I think it was... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was. Um, <coughs> if you want to send me music, um, send me music on um, Twitter. It's probably the best thing. Uh, just tag me. Favorite sound system to play on? Uh... PK and um, oh, Void uh, Incubus, amazing. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Carl Neuron, all the Neuron guys that uh, doing amazing work in sound. Um, and yeah, this side of the world, I, I love all the PK rigs. Yeah. Uh, really there's fun. one, I think my favorite system we played on is the one in. Um, uh, it's from Toronto, 40 Hertz, I think it's called. Do you remember we played yeah, twice? Yeah, 40 Hertz is sick. Those guys are they, dope. They have a, system, a setup at Valhalla, and it sounds great. That's right. It's sort of a classic, sound clashy kind of system. Mongo's um, hi-fi vibe. And yeah. I love the Mongo's as well. But stereo, and uh, yeah, just really fun and just thick bass. Um, I really like the Hennessy in Boston. Hennessy is well. great as well. There's yeah. a Hennessy in Chicago now, and, and then there's one in the Northwest, I think, uh, and they're super killer. Um, favorite Garms? <laughs> I don't know. We love Cavamped. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Cavamped. But is not great. buying much right now. Out of, you know. Yeah, I mean. Not having any shows for. Definitely a not months. trying to buy a jacket, <laughs> a Cavamped yeah. jacket right now, because. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, what else? Um, what yeah, monitors do we use? John we, Spine the monitors we use yeah. are the Barefoot uh, Micromain 45s. I'll just pop this off for one sec. These joints right here, Micromain 45s. Uh, the headphones I'm using are... Wait, these are some me. like Sennheisers that are like the HD... 280 I believe mm. um, which are you know decent um, pretty they have really good isolation they sound really good um, uh, I use these hi-fi man uh, mass drop hi-fi man collab he 4xx a lot which are like pretty much the cheapest good sounding planar magnetic driver headphones you can good. you can get um, and then our friend Rosson, uh, Alex, Alex Rosson uh, was the CEO and founder of Odyssey, and we used to use Odyssey a lot, and um, they're great for reference, the LCD-X, yeah. uh, and he's actually just started his own new company 
called Rossin Audio Design, and we are receiving some RAD zeros, which is his flagship model, soon, and we'll be using those. And we to make our next project actually. Yeah, had the privilege of demoing them at his shop in LA, and they're phenomenal. I would say the best headphones I've ever heard. Um, and we we were in there, and we actually got to. Uh, work with Alex and um, <clears throat> the cups, the like cups consist of this sort of plastic outer part on the RADs uh, and then yeah. the driver in the middle and the plastic outer part is like a an acrylic that you can mix. actually mix together yourself. So we went into the shop, we mixed the acrylic with like all these different crazy colors that he let us pick and um, took a bunch of pictures and Alex came up with these like crazy pink, silver, clear black. ones, and mine yeah. are kind of black and uh, purple. Uh, and uh, you mix them together, you let the stuff set in like a pressure chamber, and then he takes them out, uh, polishes them, carves them down to the shape that they need to be, and mounts them on the drivers, and then ships out the headphones. And they're, you know, they're just like best in the world sound quality, like crazy good headphones, and really an interesting look. But yeah, check out Rossin Audio Design yeah. on Instagram. Um, yeah. Um, and these are just uh, Bose noise cancelling. They're just my traveling headphones, but for this, they, they, they do just fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe I think when we do another stream, we should have the headphones by then so we can show you guys. Yeah. <coughs> do we like techno? Yeah, we love techno. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Landark Artifacts, yeah. Yeah, Winter Artifacts is sick. Um, I really like Clouds. Um, I really like a lot of stuff that's coming out on Steel City Dance Discs, which is like mm -hmm. an Australian label. Kind of between house and techno, but um, they're really sick. Uh, I also love um, like Alexi Perala uh, microtonal techno stuff. Um, and then we've got some homies who make techno, like Randomer. Yeah, Rob, I'm big up, mate. Um, yeah. Love his stuff, and then obviously the Headstrong and yeah, the Headstrong crew, Vlawan, Vlawan's uh, amazing. Karen, obviously with Pariah. I don't <clears> know <throat> if he still goes by Pariah and Solo. I think he does. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like a bunch of techno. I like I like going out to to techno. Yeah, uh, going out to techno is like the most fun. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, that like, would be my kind of. Oh yeah, and also I've got shout out my friend Tasha. She does. She runs a record label called Neighborhood, and she's. I'm really, she's smashing it. She's got some cool uh, techno bits coming out. Uh, label's been going for like, well, the brand's been going for 10 years now. But yeah, you should uh, check check that out as well. But uh, yeah, for going out, it's like the best for me. It's, it would, it's kind of would be my choice of. Yeah, there's this thing with techno where like, uh, it doesn't matter as much who's playing, you know, and it's just sort of like you're just there and enjoying the music and people tend to dance in circles with their friends rather than like everyone looking at the DJ and mm -hmm. there tends to be no visuals and it's just like a little bit more of a vibe you know um, it's, it's just different you know it's, it's a different experience going out to a techno show mm -hmm. um, what else uh, record actual industrial machines like a jackhammer or machine gun and mess with the samples that would be really fun we should definitely yeah grab this this joint and take it out in the world and get you some recorded samples. some stuff with our friend Alex, right? And yeah, we actually so, used a couple bits. Yeah, yeah, we've recorded. Um, I did a bunch of work with our friend Alex Reberg, um, who goes by Sonis S O N I S. Sonis. Yeah. Just dropping the name in the chat. <coughs> um, he uh, does a lot of sound design for. Uh, video games. He works on this game called Rust, and uh, I went over to his house and we recorded um, ourselves playing playing a rusty dish rack with a, a horsehair jello bow, <laughs> so weird. like that, and uh, it just makes the craziest like metallic scraping sounds. Some of which ended up in like my EEPROM track, The Cat, and a couple other a uh, couple other like shades things just like cool foley sounds yeah um record your own record your own sounds and you'll just completely set yourself apart from everybody else who's who's doing stuff you know definitely um make your own sample packs <sighs> um yeah what 
himself. Can I need a snack soon? This guy says, I do visuals for techno shows. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, besmirch your, uh, your work. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. I mean, techno shows are just different, you know? It's like, it's a different vibe. What do we use for modeling? We use Cinema 4D. Yep, I use Cinema 4D. Uh, Alex doesn't do 3D, but he, you know, puts together a lot of the 2D assets that we're working with. Um, uh, would we ever put out a sample pack? Yeah, I think I would. Um, I've been toying with the idea of putting one out in response to this current situation and uh, maybe uh, splitting the proceeds with uh, with a reputable, uh, deserving cause. I think that that would be cool. Yeah. Um, I've got a bunch of samples. Someone was asking about the hurricane kick. Uh, there's a bunch of EEPROM samples in the Roland MC707. Uh, if you go out and buy one of those, there's the EEPROM's EEPROM hurricane kick is in there and the hurricane snare. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're about to get a, hot, a whole lot of demos. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, sometimes we make kicks and snares from scratch, uh, or I'll like punch up a snare with uh, s other sounds. You know. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't do like sort of uh, make drums for, like you know from serum or anything like that. Really, um, I like to blend like sort of organic. Yeah. Or like breaks or something that like, retains some kind of yeah. organic. I'd say I'm I'm the one who's more likely to do straight up synthesized stuff, and Alex is more likely to do organic yeah. sampley stuff. Um, but I'll definitely make like we'll make kick drums on the modular together, like yeah. 808 bass kicks yeah, yeah. kind of stuff. Um, what do we put on our rider? Okay, smoked salmon. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, Crackers. Snappy crisps <laughs> are super fire. Crackers. Have to go with the smoke salmon. Um, I like coconut water, so coconut it's good water. to stay hydrated. Um, Brie. We've been winding down like. <laughs> yeah. che cheese is on there for it's sure. It's like a kind of a little spread. Like fruit, fresh fruit is good. Um, we sometimes drink alcohol, but we've been. Um, it depends. If we haven't seen each other for a while, we might get a bit loose. But <laughs> in general, yeah. I've been winding that down, like doing a lot of sober shows. Um, Cazadores Reposado. Is my go-to. Um, I'm a rum guy. Uh, I like rum. Jade, Jade, the mod in the chat actually writes my rider. So, <laughs> but this is all pipe dreams right now because we're not going to be eating rider food for uh, no. six months probably. So whatever, we'll have to make our own rider. <laughs> yeah, man. Classe Azul. That's a vibe. That's yeah. a big vibe. Um, yeah, would we like to hear a track that was inspired by 216? Yes, we would. Please send it to us on Twitch and tag us. Do we like Korean food? I love Korean food. Love a bit of kimchi. Yeah. Love barbecue. Uh, love the pancakes. Um, I got to go to Korea uh, earlier this year, or no, last mm -hmm. year, and it was uh, one of the best experiences of my whole traveling, world travels ever. Um, Stella, not a big fan. Favorite beer would be Stella. Quack uh, mm. is the number one um, for me. Uh, we love Belgian beers. Yeah. Alex is Belgian by blood, so. Frappes beers, but you know, they're heavy. They're like wine, basically. Yeah, so, so. it's a commitment. Um, Stella, not my first you know, choice. Yeah. Uh, uh, send a rider to Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Uh, favorite track with the name Kimchi in it? I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> we were actually playing that Saruta jam in our sets for a while before it was called, it something, was called else, something else, though. before it was called Kimchi Crisis. Maybe Seaweed Salad or something, I can't remember, man. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, uh, recommendation for first analog synth. We talked about this earlier, but the Korg MS20 Mini is really great. Um, the, uh, Ooh, I was almost not my uh, cable. Yeah, uh, you don't really need it anymore if you don't want it. Yeah, that's true. What was the um, question? Recommendation for analog synth, first analog synth. What's the uh, the little mm -hmm. micro Arturia, micro brute? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it depends what you want. If you want something poly, something mono. Yeah. Um, you can get some. What would I recommend? You could get like if you 
on a budget, you can get the desktop version of a virus. Yeah. Like a snow. And the um, old viruses, well, you can probably get pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, <coughs> what else? Uh, Technically not analog oscillators, but they yeah. still sound sick in their hardware, which is kind of the most important part, I think, is like having a separate box that you can have a hands-on interface with, you know? Um, I'm trying to think, I mean, yeah. If you want to jump straight into modular, then the Moog Mother 32 is a killer mm -hmm. deal. Uh, it's like under 500 bucks, and it's got all these crazy, crazy modular features and a Moog uh, filter, which is like indispensable. You can run drums through the Moog filter. Sounds killer. Uh, yeah, Korg Monolog. Yeah, that's a good one, mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, easy to use. And then there's like a Poly version now too, which is like really cheap and sounds great. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, Mother 32. Turn in sound collab. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, have we watched other artist streams? Yeah, we tuned into Matt Zo. Uh, we watched Zeke throw down a crazy uh, turntablist yeah. bass music set yesterday. Um, yeah. Um, I uh, watched a lot of like video game streamers. I watched Ryu Car on uh, playing Mario Maker 2 mostly. I watched Grand Pooh Bear. Uh, yeah, just random stuff. I watched or Orator. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, a lot of people were asking if this is going to be archived. Uh, this is definitely yeah. going to be archived, and we'll probably edit it and throw and, it on And there's uh, a YouTube. few questions coming in now about stuff that we covered, like uh, drums always on grid and things like that. If you, if you watch yeah, if back... You, if you dig back, you'll, we talked about drum groove. We talked about what analogs, uh, what your synths we like. Um, yeah. And I've seen everyone on... <sighs> yeah, YouTube is youtube.com slash C slash Um JD just dropped the link uh, in the chat. Headland collab will be on the next release, which is next on 1985. I've seen a few people ask for it, so there you go. Yeah. Um, Sub packs are cool. I don't own one, but I think uh, they're great if you have, especially like maybe if you're lacking low end in your monitors or you know, you know, yeah, in a room that um, doesn't sound great. I think it can help. Yeah, but it's yeah. I think it's it's like anything you get used to. It's like working on headphones. Yeah, but I think it's definitely definitely cool. I know a few people who use them. Yeah. Um. Um, inspiration I just like glanced over and remembered that I have this deck of oblique strategies cards which are Brian Eno and somebody else wrote these and they're like it's a deck of cards and like I'll just draw a random one and like if you're at if you're at a bit of like block in the road when you're making a tune mm -hmm. you just pull one of these and it'll say something like Be dirty, <laughs> which is like, yeah. Already we're doing that anyway, so yeah. Here's the next one. Uh, tidy up. So like, it's just like very oblique creative advice that like can be applied to pretty much any mm -hmm. genre or even any art form. If you're doing a painting, you could tidy up. If you're doing a track, you could tidy up, and like sometimes some subtlety may re might reveal itself in your tidying up that you didn't think to work on before. Uh, yeah, there's an app for this too. Um, I like the physical act of pulling a card. Uh, here's a good one. Um, destroy nothing or the most important thing or both. Um, but yeah, it's, cool. uh, you know, just strategies for creative, bypassing creative roadblocks. Um, Somebody dropped a link to the web app. And there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, and they're called... Oh, yeah, here you go. Brian Eno slash Peter Schmidt are the authors. Uh, oblique, oblique Strategies. Um, yeah. Uh, 
yours said, go outside, shut the door. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually good advice sometimes. So you get, yeah, yeah. Um, you get roadblock and you just need to go outside and shut the door and not think about music for a sec. In, the, in this case, at the moment, I'd say go inside and shut the door. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's better, better advice. Yeah. Um, have we ever made a track without using any hardware? Uh, probably, yeah. Um, you know, sometimes we Samples. use in yeah. the box stuff like the Sound Toys plugins are really good. Samples. Uh, uh, how much do we work inside the box versus outside the box? So that's kind of continuing that that question. Um, I'd say what we do, our workflow is like we'll do a lot of creative sound design stuff outside the box and not have a particular goal in mind. Just sort of experiment with the MS20 or the modular or whatever, um, granulator. And uh, then we'll sort of cherry pick like the most interesting moments. And then then we'll sort of determine what BPM do we want to be working at for this next song? Like what kind of melodies are going to have? Like what's the structure going to work, be like? And at that point is when we'll sort of develop it into a song. But there's this, and the development process pretty much all happens in the box, uh, unless we want to run some drums through a little bit of outboard gear or fatten something up with a little bit of something. Um, but it's sort of like first we do outside the box and then we do inside the box. That's kind of the general workflow yeah. for the most part. Um, for the first modular synth leaning towards a Behringer Neutron, mm -hmm. dude, no one should be buying Behringer products ever at this point. They're total assholes. Uh, terrible business practices. Mm -hmm. They attack journalists who merely write articles about them. And Uli Beringer is a piece of shit. And please never buy Beringer. Yeah. Um, Fuck those guys, basically. Um, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do not buy Beringer products. They're garbage. Um, Google, it's deep, man. It's deep. And it goes deeper than that. As in, it goes deeper. They, yeah. Okay. Beringer sued people for talking about them on a forum. Anonymous users of a forum. Uh, they're absolute garbage, and their business practices are just like beyond reproach. Tehran, or, I mean, reprehensible is the word I'm looking for. Uh, they're terrible. They tried to sue Dave Smith, which is insane. Uh, yeah, they suck. Um, uh, which shade track did we finish the quickest? I don't know. Sometimes we can bang out a tune in like a couple hours. Uh, Alex made most of that one tune on the plane. One uh, tune. Uh, the one that goes gang 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 gang. Oh, the cryptic, <laughs> yeah. Cryptic. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, yeah. It depends. It depends. Um, but like the creative process can be very quick. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the mixing down, which is always. I mean, it can be fun, but mostly annoying. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> you work for Berenger? I'm sorry. I've read the glass door. <laughs> I've no, read the glass door reviews of Behringer and it's it scares me. Um, do I still do circuit bending? No, I haven't done it for forever. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, what else? Um, Funny enough, I knew what the one that goes <laughs> ding, 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 yeah. is about. How do we do the main bass in Colombo? That is a Moog sub 37, I think. I feel like that's yeah. MS20. MS20, yeah. For the amp again. Yeah. Isn't it? It sounds like it is. Um, mad resonance going on. Yeah. How do we make the stabby bass and chains? Uh, <sighs> what does chains even sound like? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Not being, not joking. Yeah. Like, no, we're, we're terrible with like remembering what tunes we made. Um, the stabby part. Uh, let's see. I know it's like an 85 one. I can kind of hear it in my head, but let's so we drop chains in here. Chains, 11, yeah. I'm going to drop chains into Ableton and I'll take a look real quick here. So, here's chains. Uh -huh. Stabby bass. This. Okay, so, so some of it's Moog. Yeah. And then 
it go back a bit? Just for the yeah. Just. So move. I think that's a sample, yeah? Sounds like uh, maybe some modular recording and then like midi it up. Yeah. Uh, doing the same sort of rhythm. And then that's just like a classic rave sound right there. Yeah. Um, and then move. here, that sounds like Moog again. Uh, Alright. Yeah. yeah. process vocals for the pre-drop uh, to Saga. I think we uh, run everything through Frequency Shifter, and uh, which is just the Ableton Live stock one, and just like uh, push it down a little bit. Um, Distortion, like amp or something else. The riser in Colombo is a sample from a 1960s uh, experimental electronic record that I found somewhere, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, but yeah, sample. Uh, yeah, what else? The lead in Garyon. Um, my main like thing with doing leads is basically use a sawtooth wave, um, and you've got your like, your typical sort of like funky worm kind of like monophonic sliding up and down the keyboard kind of thing. Uh, put a little bit of reverb on it, and then smash uh, amp and like OTT and you get this like the reverb just rushes up when you um when you uh stop playing the note it just go and like you get this cool sort of like pulsing on and off like just gnarly distorted like kind of classic EPROM lead sound I guess mm -hmm. um, very EPROM yeah um yeah um yeah. So, uh, yeah, what other questions y'all have? Unconventional arrangement techniques. I feel like our stuff's not that conventional. Yeah. I think, like, an arrangement oh, yeah. technique that... W one thing we did a lot when we were starting out was, like, I would make a beat at a certain BPM and Alex would make one at a certain BPM and we would just literally just stitch the two project files together. Um, just copy all the stuff from one into another and then like have this A section, B section, and then we would just sort of make some effort to uh, finesse that transition so that they would sound similar, get the levels all right. Mm -hmm. So like I think we did that on like a bunch of tunes on like the powers of 2EP and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what else? Favorite bars in SF? I think back fondly to my time at uh, Zeitgeist um, getting... Uh, pictures of racer five with uh my homie the happy core dj uh what else do we master our own stuff we do to play it out and then we have bob mack do that uh, we, we answered that earlier um yeah um ewoks is asking questions about graphics i'm gonna maybe do a eprom graphics stream at some point and like play mm -hmm. around with cinema 4d alex do you still use logic no no um I've I sort of over. forced Alex to transition to Ableton. I'm glad, to be honest. I mean, there's not much logic in logic these days. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I find it very frustrating uh, in terms of the writing thing. I find Ableton much faster. Maybe the audio engine is a little bit better still, I think, in logic. I don't know. It's a different way of mixing in there, I find. Yeah. That with the master, right, where in logic you can absolutely destroy the master and it will still be okay, where yeah. Ableton you can't work like that. Yeah. Um, it's it's a choice thing. I know the Ivy Lab boys still swear by um, Logic, but I'm an Ableton guy fully now. Um, Lord L collab, I would definitely be down with that. Yeah, there's um, uh, some Perez halogenic stuff coming. We've written quite a new a few things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lord L would be cool. Someone's asking what I used to write MetaHuman. I actually used. A combination of logic and did you and uh, Ableton? Yeah, it was mostly logic for MetaHuman. Uh -huh. It was a little bit of a different sound for that reason, I think. 
Um, yeah. What do we think about Philly? We had a really good show in Philly, yeah. and we had a lot of fun walking around. I love the, Philly, man. Yeah. Um, and yeah, unfortunately not going soon. Um, yeah. What's our live setup? Our live setup is uh, two MacBook Pros. Uh, he's got one. I've got one. They're both running almost exactly the same uh, Ableton live set. Mm -hmm. um, they're connected via a uh, hardware Ethernet cable, uh, and so we can do the link. Um, what we're doing, what we're doing for the set is uh, we'll trigger scene by scene. Um, the scene will be playing the song, and then uh, a whole bunch of MIDI clips. And the MIDI clips will be going uh, out through MIDI over Ethernet to this uh, PC laptop, which is running Resolume. Uh, Resolume is triggering the visuals, and that way we have synced visuals for the entire set. Um, and that's uh, pretty much how the set works. Yeah. And then both of our computers are connected via USB to the uh, DJM 900 Nexus 2, which has two USB nice. audio inputs, uh, so we can go directly into the audio without having to use sound cards. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, Maybe we'll do a like a live set breakdown at some point, but yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. It's um, simple. It takes a long time to program all the visuals, but the basic functionality is like pretty simple. Um, yeah, only yeah, one of the computers one, sends yeah. MIDI to the laptop, which is my computer. Um, Alex's is still doing audio, but I'm triggering the visuals the clips. clips at the same time. Yeah. Do we go to the barber? Yeah. Up until two weeks ago, we went to the barber. Now we can't. Uh, Man, we, um, we probably still now. could, but like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Wait, next time you'll now. see, you'll see yeah. and he's a uh, new haircut by me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know how much I can... you're actually going to see it because I'll be wearing a hat, but you know. I reckon I can do an all right fade, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. You we'll can see. be, you can be we'll just come my over first experiment. A dent in the side of my head. Bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit dramatic. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh... Oh, it's fun. It's been fun doing this, man. Like, yeah. Because yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a. It's actually nice to like fun. talk to people besides you know ourselves, just, just us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is a YouTube video of me going over my live set, which is a little different from the Shades one, but same kind of concept. Uh, if you type "eprom how I play," it's kind of like a breakdown of that. Um. Yeah. How often are we going to stream? I don't know. We're going to make it a more regular thing, obviously. Yeah. Um, maybe we might, I don't know, maybe next time we can just do a session from scratch or something. Yeah. It would cool. also be fun to do a DJ set and just play some, like, whatever tunes. I could, like, grab the record record players, yeah. turntables, and a mixer, and just, like, go through our vinyl. Uh, would anybody be interested in, like, hearing some, like, old tunes that inspired us, like not necessarily our material, but just throw down a DJ set. Uh, let us know. Um, could be kind of fun. Just be playing Calibre for two hours. Right. Got a bunch, <laughs> of, a bunch of D&B records. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's a resounding yes, it looks like. Uh, yeah, if, if you guys want to see us mess around with the modular... Basically, we we need to get another camera. I'm I'm gonna experiment with like using my phone mm. as a second camera. Uh, hopefully that'll work. Um, yeah. Do we give each other specific roles when producing a shades track? I think to some degree, you know, like I, I think like drums will kind of like split that duty. Like I, I feel like Alex is a little better at like nailing the final mix down stuff, um, and uh. I. Yeah. I like if, if we if we want to do some like ARP melody or something, like or like chords, like I'll usually lay that down myself. Yeah. Or like a lead or things like that. I think yeah. you would be better at that. that. Yeah, uh, a I lead will just kinda of use my it depe sounds. It depends on different tunes. Yeah. Um Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a difficult question. It's it's kind of a bit of both and sometimes, you know, uh, you'd make the most of one track and I'd make the most of another. Yeah. Or, and we yeah. don't, it we, it doesn't matter. It's still us. If it's you know? shades, it's shades. And like, if we're making it with the intent of it being shades, then it's going to be, it's going to yeah. sound like shades, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have had certain tunes that are like 90% one of us or 100% even, but um, most of the time it's, 
we're touching the tune in some de some degree. Um, yeah, uh, somebody asked us, what are our musical backgrounds as young boys? Uh, jazz, band, guitar, etc. I played a... <laughs> Spice Girls for me. <laughs> I think they mean like, uh, what did we play? Like, I played like a uh, trombone. Oh, I thought we were talking about music we listened to. Yeah. Um, I played, Spice Girls. I played like drums and guitar and <laughs> did like shitty Nirvana covers with my mates. Like, I thought we were sick, but we... Yeah. Man, but I don't know. Yeah, I played guitar and drums. I was like singing in this like punk rock hip hop cover band called Dollhouse Vampires when I was like 10 years old. And then like, uh, you would definitely not be able to find that anywhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I used to listen to Spice Girls, man. I thought they were sick. Yeah? Yeah. Dang. I was really into <laughs> Beach Boys, uh, Beatles, like stuff that like my parents turned me on to, you know? Um, but no, like in all seriousness, like, uh, well, I did, I did, I did think when they first came, Spice Girls when they first came out, I was like, oh, these guys are quite sick. But you know, I was like, I don't know how old I was. But um, my first proper music, I think, was like French hip hop or something when I was like 12, 13. Yeah. Are we even talking about that? Or am I completely guessing? Well, uh, we were talking about like our musical training, but I mean, I uh, yeah, yeah. But, but, I'm no classic. I'm not. I'm not classically trained at all. And although I've made like I made I make melodic drum and bass sometimes, like yeah. it's all by ear. Yeah. Um, you know, so there, yeah, there's I advantages can't... to being classically trained. There's also a certain advantage to not being classically trained in that like you're maybe more likely to play stuff that's outside of your current key or like break rules without intending to break rules. You know, um, and then. Uh, Somebody asked what were like some of our early inspirations like for me It was like when I first heard Nine Inch Nails They totally blew my mind and mm. I wanted to be Trent Reznor for like five years and then like <laughs> <laughs> Explains a lot about my personality, right? And then like uh, I don't know yeah. like, uh, when I first heard I, I first saw the movie hackers and I heard like prodigy and uh, Good chemical brothers and underworld and I was just like holy shit. This is like this whole other world that I'd never really heard before and I immediately I was 12 when I saw Hackers and then I was 13 when I got uh, Rebirth and started messing around with Rebirth which is like propeller heads who make Reason made this software called Rebirth it was like yeah, I two software Rebirth. 303s and 808 and a 909 and like I would just play with that for hours and like record it to tape and mess around with it and um, mm. yeah but what about for you, like when Me, you were 10 to 15? When I started about? paying attention and buying music, I, it was in South of France when I was from the age of, well, what, I would say I was like, when I started skating, like skateboarding, I was, I think, I started skating quite young, but yeah, it, it, you know, like watching 411 videos and stuff, yeah. like, that kind of, that's where I got the music from. Yeah. Um, and then I got into like, I like and that. yeah like, that side of things that was kind of later and but yeah. before that was more like hip hop like US hip hop I yeah. never really heard it before and I was like this is sick yeah and then my schoolmates we were all skaters and they were playing French hip hop and then I got that's my first thing where uh, uh, like I am and TM uh, funky family all those guys I don't know if any of you know that but French, that like early French hip hop, which is like very boom bap. I am even, co uh, they did a collab with Wu Tang at one point. Sick. So, I just know like Solar. Yeah, MC Solar. <laughs> yeah. That was even before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 411, man. Like, I don't know, because I heard a bunch of, sh I was like, what's this? What's this? Yeah. And it was all different styles, because yeah. every skater chose their like own soundtrack. Yeah. Right? yeah so totally. it was cool. Like, that was like, I'd say that kind of spot my interest in yeah i forgot things. how much music i discovered through skate and snowboard videos like yeah that's crazy i didn't even think about that yeah that's a good point um yeah uh but yeah early bands for me were like nine inch nails minor threat primus uh nirvana mm -hmm. um soundgarden uh and like you know just like old school early 90s alternative and like late 80s punk and stuff um yeah can alex do a kickflip <laughs> yeah i reckon like have we got board here let's <laughs> not do that in front of the module we gotta build a board um i was all right at skating yeah i was garbage <laughs> this fellow i still lot. like every now and then but then i fall now and i'm like ah, 
poets, like yeah. when you're like <laughs> when you're like old like us. Too old for that shit, bro. Too old. Plus, I don't want to break legs when I'm supposed. To, well, I guess now I could. I could yeah. just sit at home for a while. <laughs> You'd be fine. Um, Wipeout soundtrack. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, yeah, what well, F Zero? F Zero. Was it F Zero? Wipeout was the one that had the electronic soundtrack with like Apex Twin and that. What else? Um, mm. Any movies inspire us? Yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of like uh, Akira Kurosawa, like samurai movies. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Western movies. You like Lynch as well, don't you? No. Yeah, David Lynch. Uh, I really like David Cronenberg. So um, Dead Ringers is one of my favorites. I love uh, a lot of French cinema. Yeah. Um, yeah, cult classics like Lion and stuff like that. But there's a lot of good French cinema. Mm. And um, yeah. Um, sort of. Yeah, other than that, I don't know. Re- uh, recent movies, I, I really liked uh, Monos was one of my favorites last year, and uh, Parasite was obviously amazing. I think a lot of people know about that now. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody's talking shit about Existence. Uh, you're totally tripping. That's an amazing movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Each um, of their own in it. Right. To each their own. Yeah. Blade Runner. Yeah. Blade Runner is obviously a massive inspiration. Uh, the music from the first Blade Runner is a huge inspiration to me personally uh, by Vangelis. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think like soundtrack stuff is like you know definitely a big, big thing for me. Mm. Van Gelis, obviously. <clears throat> What's your favorite exercise for fitness? We've been running lately um, because I don't want to go to the gym right now. Um, yeah, I feel it's not running and some cool gym. weight stuff, but no gym at the moment. It's, it's uh, a bit shit. Yeah. Um, Push-ups and yeah. uh, running basically right now. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, fitness pizza in my mouth yeah <laughs> that's the move uh, am I from Portland I live in Portland uh, we're in Portland right now I'm from Vermont originally uh, I used to live in SF Bay for a while do we use orchestral libraries uh, not really um, I use the contact native one a little bit mm-hmm. um, it's good enough for what I need to do when I use orchestral stuff, which is rarely, um, tend to like, you know, find other sounds that would serve the function of a whatever orchestral uh, instrument we would be using. Like, if we want to do a timpani, we'll probably just use a thunderclap or you know, somebody smacking a big uh, piece of metal or whatever, rather than like an actual timpani. Uh, yeah. Um, Yeah, what else? <sighs> Boy. Check out Ghost Main. I'll check out Ghost Main. Why did I choose Portland? I love Portland. It's beautiful. Um, just love it here. Love Portland. Um, it's very green. It's very open. Um, uh, good city planning. <laughs> Portland. <laughs> I'm a, yeah, I'm a fan of Portland, yeah. It's fucking hilarious. I love I haven't it. actually watched that. Oh, dude, it's so good. Um, what's it like working with Greg? Love working with Greg. He's basically a genius, and he's really good at production. Uh, if we could write a tune for a major pop artist, who would it be? And I mean, I I would say like like to work with Danny Brown in the future. I don't know if you call that a pop artist, but um, it's more like rap artist that we'd want to work yeah. with probably. Um, obviously, love you know, like Flume and Arca and like I consider those to be sort of pop crossover. Uh Sophie is amazing. Um you know, I'd I'd love to work with any of those people. Yeah. Uh Anderson Pack. Anderson Pack. Super sick. Um Kendrick. Yeah, Denzel Curry. Kendrick. Yeah. Yeah, Denzel. You know. Yeah, I mean the list is long, but mainly rappers, I guess, because our music lends itself to that more so than pop. Yeah. 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 Mr. Worldwide. Yeah, definitely. Uzi <laughs> Vert would be sick. Yeah. Uh, hello from Japan. What's up? 
How you doing, Romer? Um, would it sound like shades if we worked with a pop artist? You know, I don't know. Uh, we've never done it, so we'd have to try it and see. Yeah, just, yeah. Put some Adele through the Sherman filter bank and that would be a shades tune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we should try that. That'd be fun. It's actually be quite good. Yeah. Drench and reverb, I'll probably get something out of it. Yeah. Little Snake. Yeah, Little Snake is awesome. Yeah. Love Little Snake. Go check out his new music. He's great. Um, Miley Cyrus, yeah. Love to do a tune with Miley. <laughs> uh, 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 do we have a template when we start a project? Um, I have a I have a template that um, if I open Ableton, I will show you. If I make a new... <clears throat> File. My template is pretty simple. It's basically just uh, my studio inputs mapped to two different channels. So there's an empty MIDI, so I can just drop whatever in there. Mm -hmm. I have the modular, which is like inputs one and two. Zoxbox, currently something else, but input three. Octatrack, currently that's my machine drum, input five and six. So you know it's like this outdated template, but whatever. Makes it and then a little have, easier. Yeah, and then like setting up like external effects on a loop as a external audio effect and then like having them ready to go so you can just like type sherm to get the sherman uh which is feeding back for some reason and uh i type tip top to get my modular effects loop um <clears throat> uh yeah sherman fb stream please uh yeah what else uh how many months out of the year are we at home versus on the road uh i i tend to do like uh weekends on the road um and uh i've done long stints alex does longer um yeah it just kind of depends on yeah. the schedule you know um but i would say like i spend probably a third of my year away from home pre-crisis and uh Two thirds at home. Maybe a little more for me. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> chat's getting spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Certain things we won't comment on, but uh, yeah, we've been on for like three hours. Recommended near field monitors. Uh, yeah, barefoot. They're, yeah, they're the best. Um, Big up barefoot guys. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I think we sh we've been on for like three hours. I think we'll probably wrap it up. Yeah. Um, and go. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get some sunshine in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Alex is gonna pee his pants. <laughs> uh, but yeah, big up to all y'all for tuning in. I hope it's been informative or yeah. at least interesting or at least uh, not boring. Uh, and we love you guys for yeah, hanging out with us. Guys. So made it easy for the first one for me. So yeah, nice one, man. Yeah. Um. We'll be back. I don't we'll know. We'll be back. What... Yeah, I don't know what we'll we'll be doing, but uh, let us know what you want us to do um, on Twitter, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll jump back on sometime soon this week. Yeah, everyone, stay safe. Stay at home if you can, stay or at home, just stay, stay at safe. home unless you're buying food or whatever. Yeah. You know, like any. Yeah, I'm not gonna preach again, but yeah. stay safe. Be safe, y'all. All right, peace. <laughs>